evening, gentle listener, and welcome to Distractable. This week, Warlock Wade waggishly walks his hombres down the halls of horror. Bullish Bob hates people coming in his room and gets eyeballed by his own android. Morgish Mark deftly deconstructs the art of the unknown and displays his exhaustive understanding of the subject. From iron lung and jizz trailers to bloody fingered brain surgery. <laughs> yes, it's time for Boo. Now sit back and prepare to be distracted and enjoy the show. Hey everyone, welcome back to another episode of Distractable. I'm today's hostess with the mostest, Wade, and I'm joined by my co-hosts, Mark and Bob. Hey guys. Hello. Hi. If you guys haven't been here before, there's a show where one of the three of us gets to host, the other two compete for points, whoever gets the most, or least, if at the host discretion at the end, wins and hosts the next episode. And in this case, it's me. I'm sorry, I just I just saw something on the subreddit that just I was looking to see if like oh what are the what are the people up to and I, the top post if you go to the subreddit right now yeah yeah okay I'm going to subreddit I just want you to experience this did you sort it by most recent or just default it's just I went right there just if you go to oh <laughs> <laughs> wait hang on let me get there I'm slow for some reason where the hell is there it is. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I can see why that's on top. No, I see what they did there. Yeah, I'm gonna upvote that. For all the listeners fuming, we're not showing what it is, so don't worry. <laughs> we're just laughing. At if you want to know, you're you're. Oh wow, it really is. Wow, <laughs> man. Okay, that's a whole other kind of thing. If you guys want a description of what we're looking at, imagine Mark's Iron Lung trailer. Check out Iron Lung, by the way. Uh, but reimagine blood if it were. I don't know. Light gray, white. <laughs> okay, it just says the title is Iron Lung, but uh, with jizz. <laughs> uh, there exactly it is. Exactly <laughs> man. It is. <laughs> there, there you have it, I guess. It looks incredible, Mark. Ah, thanks. Thank you so much. I appreciate that. You should use their version. I should. You know, I was thinking of recoloring the whole movie. Um, That's, that's a good idea. It's a very different movie like this. Ah, well, pretty much the same, if you think about it. I don't want to. No, think about it, Wade. Think about it for a minute. Uh, segue time. Uh, how are you guys doing? Oh, I'm good. Great. You're really making this hosting a podcast episode go real smoothly, man. Why? With small talk Why? like that, who needs enemies? Look, look, small talk, small talk. All I have to talk about people don't like, so I'm not going to say anything. You could literally talk about your movie trailer that just came out, like, in the last few days. No, I don't want to. Okay. Bob? You already know how I am. You have a baby. No, because we hung out this weekend. Yeah, I know, but we could talk about it. You already know. The viewers don't. The listeners don't. Well, they should have been there. Yeah, they should have been there. I think it was a private event. <laughs> <laughs> no, but we did fly with James this past weekend, and um, I, it went surprisingly well. It was only like a two-hour flight, so it was not that long, but he, he done flewed. He did not enjoy the being out of his routine as much. It was kind of a long weekend, but the flying was great. He sleeps in the plane pretty good. It was fun. Yeah, it was good. You know what else we did, Wade, so. We had a baby on the plane that was like dead silent during the flight and then um we took a shuttle from the airport to, like where we parked our car and uh the same baby was just so unhappy about being on the shuttle and the mom was like you were so good on the plane what are you so upset now and i, I don't know the answer to that but baby fly yay shuttle nay that's, that's kind of weird. I feel like the baby probably has a lot more experience in cars than on airplanes, but maybe not. I don't know. I, I have no idea as to why. If there's anything I've learned about why babies cry on airplanes or public transportation, it's because they have bad parents. Oh, that is so true, bestie. That's so true, <laughs> and I stand by your words. Your brave, brave words. Uh, right <laughs> You all right? Yeah, I was trying to be hip. I think I just stole British English for a minute. I don't even know what you said. Righto, chaps. Ah, Cheerio. Okay, all right. Hip, hip. Uh, so I do have something that's completely unrelated to literally anything else I've talked about. You guys know how I've flown a lot this year, right? Sure. No. 
I've never ever crossed this threshold. Oh, God, this freaking light. I don't know. I, I don't for know. For the what listeners, this... Mark's light just turned itself off for like the dozenth time today. I don't know why. And here it is again. It just turns on and off. I don't get it. I can't. I'm not even like connected to it in the app. I, I've unplugged it, turned it back on, reset it. It still just like turns off every once in a while and then turns back on. Anyway, not the point. So you guys know how I've flown a lot this year, right? Sure. No. All right. Well, I've flown a lot this year. Oh, okay. Go on. Because I've had to go back and forth between like Austin and LA and I went to Korea twice now. And then I was just flying around the country. I was in New York and I was just like, just got back. I've never approached this before, but I'm very close to getting diamond status in my airline reward system. For non-flyers out there, that's a lot of flying. What, what does that get you? What does I that don't get know. You? Do I get like, ex- like, I know when you get called up, you, the diamond medallions. You get to really bore the plane first yeah they get called up with like the <laughs> military members or something like it's equivalent levels of service you know the guy gets on the microphone and is like show we're gonna be in boarding with our uh diamond sky miles members and then old lady in a wheelchair is like you know i get on it takes me 45 minutes <laughs> no no this is for diamond <laughs> sky miles members nobody else has breathed the air on this plane yet this is the privilege they get the only other thing i know is there's apparently a lounge oh do you get to go to the secret club and when you're on the plane they say thank you for my service no for your status oh. Your diamond medallion status for your dollars. I don't know. It's just it's a very strange thing because I've never it's like a gamification because I've never been this close. But now that I'm 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 still like four flights away from oh. getting there. Oh, that's easy. But I'm just like, oh, man, what happens if I do? Do I get like do I turn <laughs> into a diamond? Do I get diamond armor? Do, do I do get you a- get a diamond play button or something? <laughs> yeah, what do I get? Do I get on the diamond plane? <laughs> when you get on, the captain gives you some wings like you're a five-year-old, <laughs> but they're diamond. Well, no, the the pilot comes out and be like, hey, I heard you hit diamond. Why don't you pop on my lap while I take this bad boy into the air? <laughs> get you a front row seat. Who's a big boy? Come on, hop off. <laughs> okay, here we go. I found it. There is a long list of things that you get as a diamond medallion member. Really? Wave fees for bags and ticket changes. You get priority when you're trying to upgrade to either Comfort Plus or First Class. Ooh. Complimentary Clear Plus membership to go through Clear instead of like TSA PreCheck or whatever. Really? (laughs) Uh, Apparently. Highest priority among medallion members. Board immediately. Uh, Sky priority suite of services, including check-in, priority security, airline access, and expedited baggage service. And you get a, there's a choice thing. I don't know how this works, but there's a whole list of things where you can either choose up to eight regional or a combination of two global, four regional upgrade certificates. Uh, Express statement, $500 card to your Sky Miles reserve. I don't even know what the hell all that means. Delta Sky Club executive membership. Yeah, that's the secret club. Mark, we got to fly somewhere together so I can come with you into the secret club. Travel vouchers, bonus miles. Damn. The, the only one I even remotely care about is the, the Delta Sky Lounge or whatever the hell it's called. I don't know. The clear, getting clear is pretty good. Yeah, it's not bad. But if you just lie to them, you can get a free a two-week trial and just use it and then cancel your credit card and it's fine. Uh, but also... I just want to go in the secret club so bad. Well, we so when we did the tour in Australia, you remember we we had our like guy, our Australian guy who was like running the tour for us, flies like everywhere all the time, so he had super platinum diamond status or whatever, mm-hmm. and he got us into their secret club where they just had food and drinks and stuff. Was I? I don't remember that at all. Was I there for that? Oh, maybe you weren't allowed in the secret club. Maybe it was only for the cool kids. I don't know. Yeah, you didn't get into the club. Listen, when I get diamond and I'm able to take like, was it one guest I can bring in? I'll let you guys fight for it. Well, whoever wins that episode of Distractable that week. I'll let in, so the stakes will be very high. It'll actually matter. It'll be really awkward if you choose one of us and Amy's also with. <laughs> 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 you meet you meet me at LAX and and Amy's like, why is Bob here? And you're like, oh, well, he just flew out here to fly back with us so he could use my diamond guest pass status. And Amy's like, but I was gonna, no, no, go to the gate. Try winning an episode, nerd. I don't recall you winning an episode of a prestigious <laughs> podcast. Anyway, that's the that's the newest thing. Also, it dropped a trailer, but it, it is whatever. The uh, the diamond thing, way cooler. You were right to bring that up. 
first and primarily. I don't know. The Jizz trailer's something. Yep. It's good. That's that's straight from my channel. The Jizz cut, as we call it. <laughs> Instead of the, the Snyder cut, you get the Jizz cut. <laughs> you know, you kept for months, you've been talking about the Jizz cut. And I was like, how could you get cut by that? But it makes sense now. I, I thought maybe you made like a frozen Jizz blade or something. But no, this mm. makes way more sense. Is it part of the sequel, Iron Balls? Oh, absolutely. I hope I'm not spoiling anything like I did in space this time. I, I apologize if I did. Well, you don't know anything, which is why I haven't told you anything. So that's what I you didn't then either. You just thought I did. He's told me a lot. He's specifically avoiding just you. I've seen I've seen 80 percent of the movie at this point. Mm hmm. Absolutely. Hey, look, Wade has more foam up. I do. I have one more layer. It's not done, though, so I don't know what you're bragging about. You brought it up. What do you mean? <laughs> I just wanted to bring it up so I could cut you down with it. Look, Wade has more foam up. I do, but not all of it. So shut the fuck up, Wade. Okay. Yeah, so it's still stupid. Suck it. It's better. Honestly, it is better, but it's still the white line at the bottom is just very disappointing. No, I like it. I like it. This kind of breaks up the, if it was all just one He's color. He's lying to you. No, I like it. And also, you don't need to cover all your walls. We've talked about this before. Well, only one shows up on camera. That three quarters of an inch thick Amazon foam does not deaden sound very much anyway. It's aesthetic. We mm. all know it's aesthetic. It's like thicker than that. Unless I've got real baby hands. You're basically in an anechoic chamber. Never mind. You make me feel inadequate, Bob. That's why we would never work. I think your foam is fine, Wade. Thank I don't you. know why Bob is trying to tear you down. You put it up and you-, you I don't know. We hung out and had a great time. I don't know what happened. I'm starting my villain arc, okay? I'm trying to tear Wade down with the thing that I know he cares most about in this world. Right, right. Now that I've had my redemption arc and I am the hero of the sub read it now I, I i see where this is going yes by the time i finish hand washing every panel and drying it i will care more about my phone than anything else on this planet but alas today's episode is not about foam or me or even jizz thank god though maybe that latter plays a part in a lot of the things we will be talking about uh but we are in october and we're approaching halloween and i thought maybe we should discuss something on the halloween themage as we get close <laughs> I wanted to go over horror in general. What makes something scary? What are some of the best horror games, horror movies, horror shows, and what makes them the best? And I've got some ideas and some stuff written out as well, but I want to get your guys' opinions on it. And I've also got a fun little, I think it's fun, little thing to add in at some point. We can kind of start wherever you all want to with that. This is not going to be like a you go, you go. This is really just a discussion. So kind of, however we feel like talking about it, the First horror things that come to mind. Let's name some things, get a list going, kind of figure out what we think ties them together and makes them great. Wait, you know, Bob has his hand up, but just remember, he's just trying to cut you down. Oh, okay. That being said, Bob, uh, what's up? Uh, first of all, terrible topic. I hate it. Uh, second of all, <laughs> I want to start this whole thing. Well, I'm, I am going to engage with this topic, but um, I'm not, I'm not a horror person. I don't like scary stuff in general. I find a lot of things in the real world to be scary enough that I don't need extra scares. So basically for me, the criterion is if something is advertised as being scary, I'm just going to be scared if I watch it and or play it. It doesn't matter if it's like the dumbest thing ever. Although I will say there was one movie that was, I think, supposed to be scary that didn't get me at all. Well, what was it? Uh, well, what was that called? It was the, the like sequel of The Shining, Dr. Sleep. Is that what that was called? Okay. Well, even if we, if we talk about something that's not scary that it's supposed to be, we can try to figure out why it's not. I mean, that's on the same lines. We can rule stuff out. I thought, I mean, I like, I actually do like The Shining, and I find it very scary and intense. And so I thought Dr. Sleep, it, it's like a, it was supposed to be like a sequel, right? Or like a subsequent. I don't even remember what Dr. Sleep is. I think it was like the kid from The Shining. Yeah, came, it is. All grown up, living in a small town in, in, the, in the Northeast or something, in Rhode Island or somewhere, small. But he still has the shine, right? He still like does that. And there was lore about him having a past where he captured haunted, haunt, haunting creatures in a box and stuff. But like, he's the one who like talks with his pinky or whatever in the movies. Like, Cody's not here, or Danny's not here, Mrs. Torrance. Yeah, that guy. But he's an adult. I've not read the book. I know the book is probably even better than the movie. The movie's fantastic. But. I was prepared to absolutely shit my pants at that, and I thought it was tremendously unscary, which I thought was just weird because it's supposed to follow The Shining, which I think is a very classic and iconic scary 
film. But yeah, like if any, other than that one movie, if something's supposed to be scary, I'll probably be scared even if it's ridiculous and terrible. So I'm not, I'm not a good test audience for this, but I'm happy to talk about it. You've got some experience. We've done multiplayer horror games and other stuff like that. So you still have experience in it. I, it's hard to define what is scary. This is like why a lot of projects out there are exactly. Also, I wanted to start with a list of things we find scary that we can try to find similarities. Okay. Okay. I would say it's hard. It's hard nowadays because I've played so many scary games that I, I honestly have a tough time defining what is scary. And it usually breaks down to like scary moments in games that I find to be uh, pretty horrifying um, or in movies that I find to be pretty horrifying. I'm trying to even remember what's the last horror movie I watched, which is, oh, okay. So I, I actually watched Hereditary um, after we were done filming Iron Lung. It was kind of one of those things where I was like, yeah, I should watch some horror movies. So I watched Hereditary. And there was a few things in there that I like really liked. There were some things that I like were okay. I'm not saying it's a bad movie in any way. I think it was like uh, a very interesting horror movie. Of the of the things in that movie, I think the ending was very unscary, except for one moment. Like like you guys know what I'm talking about. Have you seen it? I have not. So everyone out there, by the way, spoilers alert because there's gonna be a lot of spoilers about different movies and books and things here. So just be ready for that. But uh, no, what what is Hereditary about? Okay, Hereditary. Well, it's hard to exactly say what it's about. So it's a, it's a very convoluted subject. It's about this family that's trying to like bring into the world some kind of demon that uh, this whole cult has been trying to like reincarnate in a body this whole time and yada yada there's a whole that's the whole basic plot of it is like this family unwittingly serving this cult to bring it out um but there there is one moment that i think a lot of people know there about that is either really scary or really funny depending on what your perspective is and this is what okay. i say a lot about horror is like horror and comedy are very close to each other one they're both surprises usually one is harmless one is harmful you know it's like it's like it's your your brain wants to evaluate a threat and if it's evaluate something as a threat then it, it like kicks you into fear mode and if it doesn't it's like oh it's almost comic relief there's a moment towards the end where there's just like it's it's i forget if the camera is like slowly panning across but there's this dude that's just like in the doorway <laughs> naked naked but naked uh show us and he's like got a beam of light right here and he's like <laughs> okay. And like, I think anyone who's seen that movie knows what I'm talking about. That's not exactly a spoiler, but it's like I I'm having a hard time envisioning it. Can you do a, a real to yeah, life real demonstration? Full yeah, let me drop trial right now. All right, everyone, go to Spotify right now. <laughs> <laughs> there are so many people watch an episode ever. It's so it's such an interesting moment because it is funny to me, but also it is unsettling. It's both at the same time. Uh, I think that a lot of people probably walked away because just like just like the fucking confidence to have that shot so prominent only like hereditary uh smiling naked guy um there's probably a picture of him yeah it's something about number one the lighting is very very creepy the way he is like framed up in the doorway just in the darkness is just like i hate that i'm googling this but i'm googling this. oh oh yeah it's scary right but also hilarious it's like at first you're like what the what the f what the f it just makes you go, what the fuck? He look, kind of looks like Ronald Reagan and Orville Redenbacher had a child. It, it looks like, like the, he, I think he means the anime, the like drawing rendering of Orville Redenbacher on, on the, the packaging boxes. of the popcorn. Ah, I see. I see. But I, he looks like he he just said uh, Pepperidge Farm remembers. You're right. That actually is an app description. <laughs> it is terrifying, but it is like, it is funny. You're right. It's, it is both. It's so weird. And I think Hereditary like is a good example. There are many very scary moments. I love how what they did with like hiding things in the darkness and not like emphasizing it with a jump scare or something like that. It's something you discover. And I think that's a lot of things that that horror movie does better than others in terms of instead of like shoving it in your face, let people notice the thing because that is a scarier experience, even if most people might miss it. If people do see it, they're they're instinctual like brain is going to just like kick him in over being like is that a threat and i think that's what makes like hereditary is a, a scary movie and there are some scenes you could pick it apart of being like scarier than others but overall it's a pretty horrifying experience led by really great acting so i'd say like that that's probably like i, I would say that's a pretty scary movie i like that okay i'm just googling still friends from that movie and i'm having a strong urge to look over my shoulder i don't like it that's uh, that means it's being somewhat successful if just the images are making you do that. That would definitely be a thing. If I if I was going to say something about horror that I liked, just without having seen that movie, just from the stills and from what you're describing, Mark, being willing to put something out there that's not just like a loud jump scare 
moment where it's like someone could see that and think, oh, well, that's not that scary or see it and think it's funny or just like confusing or whatever. I think that is good horror to me because it's it's not just like, boo, gotcha. It's like off putting. Mm -hmm. And as those moments accumulate over the course of a good story, like the more off put you get, the more you're like uneasy in a way that's harder to put your finger on. And then you'll have more reaction to the scary moments that happen. Cause I'm sure that movie has jump scares of some, or, you know, someone gets oh, killed yeah, yeah. or whatever. It's about like summoning a demon. So like, I'm sure they, they go through the tropes of what happens when you do that. It just like in the still frame is kind of like, Oh, weird. <laughs> but I could totally see how if that, if that just showed up for a couple frames in a movie you'd kinda, and you saw it, you'd be like, what? Huh? It would be unsettling and it's great because it's like the pacing I think is good because it accelerates the unsettling and it, it kind of like it doesn't provide a lot of rules for its uh, universe. I'm not ex exactly sure why they have to be naked, but they sure are. Um, but I think I think if I remember uh, about some of the behind the scenes was like, yeah, originally we had all these like robes and stuff and we kind of made a last minute decision, which is a crazy thing to ask all of your cast, you know, <laughs> to last minute be like, how about instead we just have them all be naked? Yeah, you guys don't mind, right? Go ahead. I will say the like flowy robe th aesthetic in scary movies is super done. That's not scary because you see that as like a cliche of a thing that's supposed to be scary. A fully nude person in an unexpected place doing something that's really off-putting or terrifying. Kind of like a new fresh take on the like weird look at the human form that you're not really supposed to see in a general setting type of thing. Because you never see a fully naked person like like hanging from the ceiling or do or like murdering someone else. You're usually wearing clothes. Usually yeah. flowy ghost robes or something. Mm -hmm. Like, oh, that's interesting. Yeah. So that's that's my contribution for something at least recent. I think you both contributed. Bob, you also mentioned uh um, no, he didn't mention anything. I don't remember him saying anything. I worth. contributed a lot, at least as much as Mark, probably more. He tried to knock you down. I mean Mark brought up the whole topic, so obviously point. But I was gonna say you both contributed, but okay. Thank you, thank you. Fine. So for me, one of the first things I thought of whenever I was thinking of this topic was the first alien movie. I've been replaying Alien Isolation re recently, and Alien Isolation on replay, I was like, I've played through it. I remember it being a really cool game. I doubt I'll find it really as scary the second time, and I have surprisingly been mistaken. It has gotten me, like, worked up, nervous, like, oh god. Like, even though I remember a lot of the big hits as to what's to come, there's still, like, small moments I've forgotten over the last, like, eight years, whatever it's been. Um, And it's been a fresh, fun take almost again, even though I've already done it. But the first Alien movie, whenever you have no idea what's happening, just all of a sudden, like we're introduced to like strange things going on and then if i remember right the first introduction of the aliens in that movie isn't even like a xenomorph it's a chest burster right it's one of the little crawly doodads unless you count all the unless you count the that's the chest burster right the little crawly face huggers the yeah, but I meant before it actually, blah, it, it does. Blah. Do they show us the one on the face first? They might, they probably do. Oh yeah, because that's what leads to the. Blah. Yeah, so you get the face hugger first, then you get the chest first. I don't even think you see an actual like alien alien until like the end. But the whole time you have no idea what it is going on, what it is. Even if you know alien, it's like, okay, alien doesn't tell me anything. Like, what is it? What does it want? How do you stop it? What is it doing? Like, there's just so many questions as to what's going on. I think that's a key element of horror to me is not having any idea as to what's happening or why it's happening. Like, we don't know anything about this creature or monster. We don't even know really what it looks like. And you don't know why it's doing what it's doing. And I think that is a lot scarier than when you do. You look at the sequel and the sequel is like much more of an action movie. It's not necessarily a bad movie, but it's an action movie more than a horror movie because we know about xenomorphs and stuff. We know why the eggs are opening. Like we have the tension and anxiety of like seeing that happen, mm -hmm. but the scary like what is happening is gone because we know that from the first movie. And even all throughout the first movie, there's just so much tension dealing with only one of these things because we know nothing about it even what it looks like or what it can do mm -hmm. and we're introduced to those things as the movie goes on and i think like you just touched on the idea of horror in general is just mostly it almost all stems from the fear of the unknown it's okay. either like unknown that there's a monster or whatever's in the darkness or it's like unknown outcomes to decisions can be very scary you don't know what your actions are going to spill into and i think like a lot of horror a lot of horror comes from like the unknown even though there's a whole other side of story where you do know what it is and that's even worse sometimes is like you know what's coming after you you know you're not gonna survive or you know you're in danger like those th 
that certainty can be just as scary, but most of it stems from this fear of the unknown of like, you don't fully understand what it can do. And your brain is like kicked into overdrive to try to understand it. Your brain needs to solve the threat because that's the only way it can evaluate it. And so a lot of it comes from that, I think. I think you also need to have like real stakes for the characters. When you watch like a prequel of something and you know a character survives, you're not as worried for them as the movie goes on. Whereas if the first time viewing something or like watching things in like an order that doesn't have a prequel, I'm not saying prequels are always bad, but a horror movie prequel where they have a character that you know survives, you don't have that same anxiety and tension around them because you're like, well, I know they make it. Maybe it's scary and scares me and whatever along the way, but I know they make it and that removes some of that element. Because yeah, like you said, it's all, it's all unknown. The unknown makes things scary. As soon as it's known, it's like, okay. Other things that came to mind for me, uh, I don't know if any game has scared me as much as the original Outlast did. I played through Amnesia, I played through Soma, I played through Outlast. Uh, the first FNAF I thought was pretty scary, but again, it's more jump scare and anxiety for like the jump scares coming, I think, than like mm. setting. There's just the buildup of like, oh shit, I didn't get the door closed or my powers out, whatever. But Outlast, there's something about the claustrophobia of being locked inside. And then you've got a mixture of characters that all look kind of similar that are like the different inmates. And you don't know which ones are going to come after you and which ones are like just doing their thing. And there's just so much like, I don't know, and being stuck inside. There's something to me about being stuck inside that also adds something. Because Outlast 2 is also scary, but you're outside. And to me, it's like... Oh, God, okay, at least we're outside. I could run through the grass, which you can't do, but in theory, you could. Your brain tells you you can. Definitely one of the games that comes to mind. And the other ones I mentioned, Soma, uh, Amnesia, Until Dawn, the first un Until Dawn. But have you played The Bunker? The Bunker. Amnesia, The Bunker? I have not. Look, I, I, I know like Amnesia, The Dark Descent wasn't everyone's cup of tea, but Amnesia, The Bunker is one of the first games in a very long time that terrified me. Really? It's just a very distilled experience of amnesia boiled down to um, the most harrowing cat and mouse game you could probably play. It does like any every other horror game after the initial phase of scare. And once you figure out like, OK, it's just a monster that's programmed and I can figure out ways around it. The first few hours of that game, or at least the first hour or two of that game, that horrified me. I and I've played a lot of horror games in my day, but it's just like that one. For some reason, it's the sound design. It's hearing it crawl on the walls, knowing that you're not safe ever like when I, you have this safe room in the game, this is a bit of a spoiler, but you have a safe room in the game. Let me just tell you straight up, it's not safe. You think that it's safe and it's so beautiful a moment when you go in that safe room and you think that, okay, at least I can get here. And then later in the game, you realize, and I won't tell you how, but you realize that place is not safe. You are not safe anywhere from this thing. What you thought was your home base is a lie. And it's just like all of these layers of the way that they kind of like get you. And it's not a long game. It's a very contained experience. It probably, t it took me like, I don't know, like five hours to complete it. Um, but yeah, it's okay. such a smooth, beautiful experience. Outlast is good. And like, I didn't find it as scary as maybe you did, but it's like, it's definitely a horror game. Very gore. I could literally only record it. I was doing 15 minute episodes at the time and I could record it. I was watch. I literally was watching the clock the whole time, waiting <laughs> for the 15 minutes to be up so I could stop. And then I would have to do something for an hour before I could like go to bed or record more. Cause like my heart was pounding so hard. Gotcha. Yeah. Wow. Well. I did not like horror stuff. Like I was in the Bob department of like scary game. Um, don't really want to do it. But for some reason I started, I think it was because I was like emulating you to some extent. Cause I was like, I, didn't, I don't know how to be a content creator. Mark's doing scary games. I guess I'll try those. Cause like outside of like the typical, like, I don't know, Call of Duties and Twisted Metals and Diablo too. It's like, I didn't play that many different games. I don't know. I was trying to figure it all out and figure out what, who I was as a content creator. So stupidly tried following your footsteps to some extent and was like, this sucks. This really sucks. <laughs> <laughs> so your channel's just copycat of Mark. Got it. Thank yep. you. That explains all the episodes of Settlers of Catan. <laughs> yeah, he just deleted those. <laughs> you can find them. Listen, I got stuff that's scary. Okay. okay. Uh, th something that gets me, this is more like, um, this is another probably like cliche, honestly. But like, so, so one of the scary movies that actually still scares me, but I like it as uh, the franchise is Paranormal Activity. And not because okay. they are particularly good as a whole collection, 
but because on like one of our i think it was our first valentine's day or second valentine's day mandy and i watched paranormal activity together uh and i i made a whole stink about it because i was like i don't do scary movies it's too scary uh but that it's like a thing in our relationship the paranormal activity franchise and so but the thing and they do this in those movies a fair amount but this is a trope in a lot of scary stuff inanimate objects and not like oh it's possessed or something but like in i I think it was in the first one or the second one there's a pool cleaner it's one of those automatic pool cleaners where it like it has a suction hose and it just goes like and like clean hops around the pool and cleans it and at at a couple different moments like pivotal moments in the movie it gets taken out of the pool and it's like a bait right because the one of the characters sees it and is like that's it that's supposed to be in the pool and goes out to the pool and is like i'll put you back in Splash. And it's like that sort of thing where inanimate objects are tools or traps or just like get messed with, but are not in themselves dangerous. I hate because I see that sort of shit in everyday life and it makes me lose my mind. We, re- I talked about our vacuum that we got recently. It's like one of those R- Roomba style vacuums where it vacuums by itself. It keeps turning on at four in the morning. It's not scheduled to turn on at four in the morning, but it keeps turning on at four in the morning. And I swear to God, it looks at me. It's docked in our bedroom along the wall. And I swear to God, it turns on and it goes and pulls out of the dock. And it just does like a little calibration, but it looks right at where I lay in the bed as part of that. It goes and then goes it it looks at me <laughs> and when that happens at four in the morning when you just fell asleep at 3 30 because you had a crying baby all night it's scary and i don't like it but like that sort of stuff happens in real life and it's just yeah. a coincidence in regular life but when it, when it happens in movies then after i watch that movie or whatever every time something happens i'm like who did that oh shit it's here. That's a trap. I'm not going to fix that. It's a trap. It wants me to fix it. <laughs> no, I think that's good. I think you and Mark both brought, kind of brought up a similar point there, Mark, with the safety room and then you with that. Uh, it reminds me of an episode of Are You Afraid of the Dark, which was a, like a scary kids show on Nickelodeon back in the 90s, for those of mm-hmm. you out there that don't know. There was an episode about, I think it was like a high school that was built on like a Native American burial ground or one of those tropes. And the pool was like haunted. People would go swimming in this pool, like a, a high school pool with like the different different little lanes and stuff for like swimmers and they'd catch smallpox i don't think they did oh. uh they didn't live long enough because there was a goopy horrible pool monster that would come up and like grab them and pull them under oh that's way worse we had a pool at that time in my life we had a swimming pool my mom <laughs> was like yeah don't swim in that whenever i'm not home but of course my friends and i were like dude, we're gonna go swimming however after seeing that dude i didn't even if i had a friend and my mom i was like dude i need like four other people here to watch me swim because like if that thing grabs me i need a whole fucking village to pull me out and it scared the shit out of me because the pool was a safe place i never had any reason to be afraid of the pool and when safety like a safe room or a pool or a vacuum or whatever when that shit's turned against you it's like something you didn't even contemplate could be dangerous now all of a sudden is like oh fuck yeah. But that that's just my pool. That's just my, my safe spot. That's like, it's awful. It's awful. That's the other thing about horror that I love is some people think like it's super complicated. You got to do something incredibly convoluted to scare people nowadays. It really isn't. I can go swimming in my pool and I'll swim. And me, a 34 year old adult man can be swimming and in an instant, I'll be like, I think a shark got in this pool. I gotta get out of here. And I'll be clambering over the sides as fast as I can. It doesn't matter the logic. It's, I think a shark snuck in. In the instant that I got in the pool, I checked. And I looked around. A door opened in the bottom and went, and a shark flew into the pool because that's what they do they fly they fly in and i'm dead Uh and if i don't get out in two seconds i'm eaten and that's how easy it is people listening at home i could tell you there's someone standing behind you you didn't notice him at first when you came into your room you didn't check every corner there is someone standing there looking at you and if you turn around they're really gonna be pissed so don't do that no matter what you can it's okay though they're in flowing clothes not naked oh they're naked oh they're so naked never mind you're fucked and they're smiling oh their smile is growing bigger because they're listening to the episode at the same time as you are and they know exactly what they're saying they know you know they're there they're waiting for the moment for you to turn around and anyway that probably scared a bunch of people out there not everyone but it probably did
talking about what's scary in pools not imaginary sharks is one thing have you ever had a leaf on the surface of a pool get stuck up onto your skin with water surface tension and then stick to your shoulder and you couldn't figure out what's touching you <laughs> no, no that, so like leaves so. leaves float on pools sometimes right it, it'll float until they sink if you like swim up under a leaf and like stand up in the right way it'll go from floating on the water to like being on your skin and it feels like something like is just tickling your shoulder and you're like oh oh but you can't see it because it's a leaf on your shoulder it's it's scary it's scarier than it sounds i had a uh a frog or a toad dive in the pool and i was like diving to pick stuff up like at the bottom of like little rings or something and i remember like looking up and i just saw something like coming at me <laughs> and i couldn't tell like how far it was how big it was it just freaked me the fuck out and then i swam up and it was just like Little frog just like chilling <laughs> but I, that scared the shit out of me I, I if i've ever had a leaf stuck to me i think i figured it out quickly enough where it didn't freak me out too much oh dude a scary thing happened last night all right so this has happened a couple times in my life but specifically last night we were in a hotel um we just got back from traveling today last night at like 11 30 p.m which isn't too late but we have a baby so he was already asleep for a couple hours at this point at 11 30 p.m some like kids some like middle school kids were staying in the hotel, I think, but they just slammed our door. Like we were staying in a hotel. Oh. The door was locked with all the extra security locks. And then we're just sitting, Mandy and I were sort of laying in bed, like talking, kind of falling asleep. And it was just like, slam, 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 tap, 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 tap. And like, I heard feet, footsteps running away, right? Like I know that a human did it, but that shit has happened to me multiple times. How many people slam doors in hotels? Are I just really unlucky? That's never happened to me. It was scary. I've heard, I've had noisy people in a hotel, but I don't think they've ever slammed into my door. I will say, I don't know if this worked or not. We didn't know if it would, but we did try to prank you two nights ago. We, we got back from, uh, we went to a wedding. We all went to a wedding together and uh, we got back from the wedding. And I guess there was another wedding that same night. Another wedding party was staying in our hotel. The manager of the hotel we were staying at was like a fan of the, this podcast. Shout out to you if you're watching. Uh, and one of the wedding groups had extra flowers and they were like, we don't have anything to do with this. I can't take them back to my fiance because yada, yada, yada. So here, have some flowers. So you guys smashed the flowers in front of our door and scrawled out, you're going to die in the dirt that spilled? Uh, no, that was someone else <laughs> that did all that. But we did bring <laughs> them up and we took an empty uh, cardboard container and I, 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 one of our friends wrote the word flowers on it and put it on top of the flowers and we just set them gently in front of your door i didn't knock i didn't touch your door i just set them there and i was like either someone will clean this up before they get to see it or they'll just be like who the hell sent us flowers it was a really harmless prank in theory but i don't know if you ever even got to see them no we did they were fine I, you know, no one bit on the you're gonna die a bit but that's fine well i know i didn't do it so i wasn't gonna let you wait so did you guys but this is uh, this actually did happen did you guys tell them that we wanted um like room cleaning service early the next morning or is that unrelated because we no, that morning they, did you have a thing on your door because i think they just do that if you don't have a thing on your door I, we had the do not disturb out because i hate when people come in my hotel room and at 7.45 in the morning, our phone rang, and it was the front desk, and they were like, uh, did you order early room cleaning today? No, we did not and do that like, to you. No, and, and then she was like, also, they said you have flowers in front of your door, click. We left the flowers, we didn't say a word to anybody. Knowing that you have a baby, we were not about to fuck with your, like, sleep, so no. There was no knocking, we simply put the cardboard word with flowers and just set it down in front of your door, and I was like, either they'll take it and clean it, or they'll get to see it just be confused. Ha ha, harmless prank. Did nothing else. That hotel is haunted as shit, man. I don't have a bad hotel. I don't know how much time, and I don't have anything to relate with um, the story, but I, I just remembered a dream I had the other night, and I want to talk about it. Because you guys know I have nightmares a lot, and this is just a common thing. A lot of people probably know out there. But I went a stint without them for a while there. I think I was just so exhausted every night. I was barely dreaming anyway. Um, But I had this dream where I wasn't in the dream first person perspective in my own body. I was watching a video that was recorded of these events that I was in and I could see myself, but it was like I wasn't watching past events, they were occurring real time. Very confusing. So anyway, I was in the video that I was watching, which was just to imagine like I'm not even like looking on a tablet, it's just full screen in my brain playing, but I'm from the camera's perspective. And I see myself running around doing something, I don't know, we were in a, like a house or something recording something, and there was this lady that was recording that I did not know. She was blonde and she had extremely like thick curly hair, looked exactly like ramen noodles, you know, like uncooked ramen noodles, like blah blah blah. As hair does. More ramen than hair. 
Uh, anyway, so we're running around and then I slip and fall. I see myself slip and fall in the video and I smash the back of my head into a table. And I am like in pain in a way that I know I'm in pain, but I'm not in pain, if that makes sense. But I'm seeing it and I'm like, oh, guys, stop recording. Stop recording. And this lady just like gets closer and closer with the camera and like zooms in and I can see like the back of my head. It's bleeding and the like the skull is cracked open. I can see the inside of my head. And she's just like still filming and I'm telling her like, you gotta stop recording. Like you gotta call a hospital or something. And then not only does she do that, she starts peeling away pieces of the back of my head, like the skin flaps, just ripping them off. Um, and I can feel it. I'm like, ah, fucking stop that. Rips more, rips more until my brain is exposed. Reaches in with the camera right here, pulls out what looks like this, like about, I don't know, three inches long, a gray veiny sack of something. It looks like she literally just took some of my gray matter right out of my brain and pulled it out. And when she did that, when it was like, it was like, and then snap, I woke up. And I've been Ooh. having this thing where when I wake up from a nightmare, if I look into, say, a sliver of light through the door, I'll see letters and numbers suddenly go flying by at, like, maximum speed. I want to know if anyone else has that phenomenon. Like, you're fully awake and you know you're awake and you see this? Yeah, or? I'm awake and I look at the light and there's just letters and numbers flying by and, like, <clears throat> like just a whole random assortment. The Matrix is breaking, my dude. And usually it was only in a sliver of light. When I woke up from this one and I felt like that thing snapped, my whole ceiling in the dark darkness was just covered in letters and numbers sprinting by. This is all true. I'm not bullshitting. I mean, it's not true that there were letters on my ceiling. I hate that a lot. I really dislike that very much. But I don't know what that's about, but I remembered the dream and I remembered it so specifically because at the very end of it, this lady fucking looked dead in the camera and looked right at me. That actually was my dream. And you know what I remembered? I had this exact same dream when I was a kid. I remembered it so specifically because you know that gray veiny sack that I remembered being pulled out of my head? Uh -huh. I remembered because I was scared of that as a kid. That's something my mom ate in her ramen. It's a fish's egg sack. And I remember mm. because I looked up a picture of that and it's so weird because I backtraced it to my nightmare as a kid. And I'm like, oh, fuck. That's what it, that was of my nightmare when I was a child. It was. And that's why the lady and I said she had ramen like hair is because literally it's I've never had a dream be so literal of something like from my childhood. It was this weird. If you look up like a an edible fish egg sack, you might find this gray one that's been cooked and it looks like what could be brain, but it's, it's an egg sack. Um, and she would eat that in her ramen. And that's why I had this dream and I've never had anything so Yeah. It's awful. Like it, it doesn't look very edible. <laughs> I don't know what if I found the right thing, but hello. Hey, it looks like brain, right? In a, in uh, a way, it looks yeah, like brain. Kinda. No. Yeah. I yeah. Can see yeah that. It's very not pleasant. Yeah. So if, uh, for everyone listening, look it up at your own peril but i i literally had that dream as a kid not the exactly same of looking through a camera but in a similar way of falling cracking my head open and having someone pull a piece of my brain out that's and i was like oh that's what that was it was the ramen and the fish egg in it oh okay so anyway yeah that's a dream i had recently don't know about the numbers, though. The numbers and letters are very weird. That is a strange thing. No, that seems super bad. I'm not going to lie. And I don't <laughs> like that it escalated either. Like, that's not... Yeah, that's the thing. Having connected nightmares where there seems to be, like, lore building and stuff is a sure sign that you're definitely going to die as a character in a horror movie. Okay, good, good. Like, good, you're yeah. in trouble. Or you're about to kill everyone who, who you've ever known and loved. <laughs> Stop. Don't laugh like that. Were the numbers and letters like glowing? Uh, I mean, it just depends because usually I only saw them like in a, if I wake up and I'm like half asleep, if there's, a sliver, if there's a sliver of sunlight or any kind of light that I can see, there's letters in the light. This one I was looking up, I, I was lying on my back when I woke up, I looked up and it was just letters and numbers on my ceiling. Like it was, that was Were much- Were they English? Actually, that's the funny thing. Usually it was English, but as I was learning more and more Korean, occasionally I would notice, oh, there's a Korean letter in there. I would notice that. <laughs> that, that was a weird thing. So it's something with the linguistic part of the brain. I just don't know what. Apparently it could be, I don't know this for a fact, it could be something called a hypnopompic hallucination. Hypnopompic? That sounds awesome. It sounds like something Mark would have. <laughs> I don't know if that's pronouncing it correctly. It's H Y P N O P O M P I C. Mark is the very definition of hypnopompnik. 
Oh, yeah, that's probably like any kind of like waking nightmare seeing shadow people. Uh, this one just I often have what I what I can only describe as geometric nightmares, which is where it's a nightmare that is not in any way tied to like visual or auditory memory. It's like shapes and weird geometries that make my head n hurt and feel really nervous. Wait, I know what you're talking about. Wait, yeah? wait, wait, wait. No, I it was not super recently, but I had I never dream like I don't ever remember my dreams. I don't really have nightmares. If I do dream, it's usually a nightmare. But like once every couple months, I'll have a dream that I remember. The yeah. last time I had a nightmare, I remember waking up and just having that like really unsettled, like had a nightmare, really unhappy, kind of freaked out. Geometric nightmare is how I would describe it. And I don't know how else to even explain what the experience was. Exactly. But I 100% like get what you're talking about. Is this a thing that other people have? Yeah, very rarely. This has happened like twice, maybe geometric three times nightmare. in my life. It's like, imagine, okay, you know, in 2000. I was going to make a joke about this too. I was about to just. Be like, I thought it was a triangle. <laughs> no, that's it. But it was three line segments. <laughs> it's literally that's like shapes and graphs, but they aren't like regular or ordered. It's just like, yeah, no, it's like surrealistic, like weird, melty things. Yeah, it just to me, it felt like like um uh, like like cross dimensional almost or something where it was like I was oh I I, re I I took it personally as like oh I'm seeing some my brain is trying to like show me things that are like from another dimension or I'm perceiving something that's like freaking me out because it's not it's not in our reality but it's in like some you know uh some uh, it's hard to I don't know but like if that's you, that's if, how it felt if you google like geometric nightmare there's some images that kind of give a vibe of what I saw in my dream there's like especially some of the top ones it's not quite like that because that's e even that is like too organized for what the dream was but it's like oh. kind of like that Ooh, the first one that comes up just like it, it made my whole everything shiver. Is it the QB green one? The the orange one. The orange one that's very like swoopy and there's like glowing sun kind of in the background. Yeah, that one. Yeah, that's the one that I think is probably the closest that I would say. That is absolutely like down the right path in terms of like capturing what it's called Geometric Nightmare FX by G. Adam Orozco. Apparently it costs four dollars. It's a print or something, but the thing is like I can kind of remember vibes of visuals I couldn't tell you a specific thing because there was no specific thing It was yeah. just a lot of specific things or a lot of unspecific things it, it was like being slowly overwhelmed by like an emotion But it had like geometric affiliations with it mm -hmm. where it yeah, was yeah. like it was as it got more Complex or intense that it would change like I felt like I was seeing something but it wasn't it's yeah weird it's interesting that you both have that because Mark, you're not usually you you have a vivid imagination like I do, where you can picture a red apple with a bite being taken out of it, and you can smell, taste all that. Whereas Bob, you don't. So it's interesting that you both have the same kind of nightmare there. Well, I think the it's kind of like a commonality because it's very removed from anything. I wouldn't even really consider it like a visual thing. It's it was very much like what Bob was saying. Like it ties into like a lot of like emotional or perceptive things um, that are not visual based. I would take any other ordinary nightmare over that experience any day because that was far more i don't know scarring's not the right word but jarring upon waking up and being like what in the fuck am i dying for i would say for me yeah it was way it wasn't like a horror movie it wasn't like a scary thing that happened it was like it was way more existential like yeah. i was like for a day or two after that i had that lingering feeling of like confusion and unsettled feelings about like what was that experience same, what am same. I feeling? I feel like, yeah, I don't know. It was like hard to describe, but it was like looming. It was a feeling. It was a looming afterwards. I've never had a nightmare like that. All of mine are always very much like I've had third person dreams before, like Mark mentioned, where I can see myself like in it. But most of mine are first person. Sometimes I'm not me, but it's still a first person Weird. view. But I know it's not me. But I always see, hear, communicate. Like I, I have full experiences of like existing in whatever the reality is where I've got like full perceptive ability. And like, I, I don't know if this was a nightmare or not. I can't remember, but I had at least a dream not too long ago. And I don't remember exactly what happened, but I woke up feeling very sad. And like, all I could remember was like the name Abby. And I felt like Abby was a family member that I lost. 
Hmm. And the best I could relate to like the feelings I had were, I don't know if you guys have ever seen the Star Trek episode where Picard like lives on a planet and like lives an entire lifetime, like with a species and then like wakes up and it was, none of it was real. It was all just like a thing to like, that the species had created so that their culture could live on. It felt like that. It felt like I had lived a lifetime away from myself. And when I woke up, I felt the loss of like some people that were important to me in that lifetime that weren't real but like for three or four days afterward i just like i kept like i had this knot in my stomach like i lost somebody i cared about it was very strange i don't know if it was a nightmare but it was just one of those strange like perception things but all of my dreams and nightmares are always like that they've never been just of like the idea of an emotion or like vague imagery yeah well so we already did an episode called dreams and nightmares so i'm not i'm not copying that but since we're talking about it I, they can be horror horror related is it weird that i never ever in my dreams have that agency i'm never able to talk or communicate or even most of the time i don't even really feel like i'm there i feel like more like i'm observing like i'm um, i'm like i am the camera kind of like mark was describing to me Yes, but in general, probably no, because like if I tell you Apple, you said like you don't visualize an Apple, you don't picture anything in your head. And there's like diagrams of people that picture a flat red like circle with a green thing. It's like, oh, OK, a really rough idea of an Apple. And then there's some people that could picture a whole Apple with a little shiny bit on it and a bite taken out and like a worm chewing through the leaf. And they have a whole like detailed imagination of an Apple. I can visualize that. I can even hear the crunch and taste an apple in my brain if I'm trying to. Oh, well, th those are the main things that I imagine when I imagine it. So don't brag about that. Okay, so you you have those parts, just not the image. <laughs> yeah, no. Yeah, is it is it sad now that every time a Fantasia comes up, I get a little bummed out because I realize I'm never going to be able to imagine an apple. Have you tried? I was just trying. Literally, Wade was just describing it, and I was like, I closed my eyes. It's it's a gray, vast emptiness in here. Like aside from little sparkles of like light bleeding through my eyelids in a way that just like triggers my optic nerve in a weird way. Nothing. Spoiler alert, though, if you have an apple and you go take a bite of it, that's the same thing as what I imagine. It's just like that. But that means you can eat as many apples as you want. I kind of, but it's not like a lingering, like, I feel satisfied. There's like a taste. It's more like a fleeting moment of like, oh, yeah, that's what it's like. And then I kind of lose it. I can't really hold it for long. I can hold the image, but like the other parts of it, it's hard to collectively put like me eating a whole apple like... I can't really do that. I don't really have much taste imagination, so I can't really get behind that. It's not specific though. It's like the it's like the sweetness of it. It's almost like whenever I had COVID and I could like feel the sweetness. I can imagine different varieties of apples and how they taste. The tart the tart bite of a Granny Smith, a honey crisp, and how it's like more round and sweet and really good. How a red delicious is like mealy and kind of gross, but sweet in like a dull way. Those are like the main things I think about, I guess, when I'm because when I when you say imagine an apple, I'm like, oh like like a gala, like a honey crisp, or like a red delicious. Is this a painting apple, or am I going to eat this? Because it matters. I think I have way less in terms of like taste and even like touch. I can't really imagine too much. Um, but visual, I think it's like purely in like visual and audio is like what the majority of my imagination is. Yeah, and I wonder if you have it stronger for like that because you don't have the visual component. You're like making up for that lack of sense in your imagination, so you have a stronger other imagined emotion or uh, sensations. I don't know. Kind of a thing that the brain does naturally i think so that would make sense logically. yeah i don't know that's Probably, my best but... guess because I, I have the sensations but i can't hold it like i couldn't imagine eating a whole apple and having the, the actual flavor i can get the strong sensation of salty sweet tart that kind of thing but like if it was something more bland like imagine i'm eating like a fettuccine pasta or something alfredo pasta it's like i can kind of taste it guys theory theory i'm scared of everything it's because i have aphantasia I can't imagine what anything looks like. So while I'm experiencing things, as soon as I have it in my head, it's like, oh, there's a ghost. But and then in my head, I'm like, what? What? There's a. What does a ghost look like? Which one's a ghost? What's? It? And then in real life, my body is like, oh, we don't know. It could be anything because I don't know what it is. It's just a feeling, and the feeling is fear. That's interesting. That's an interesting thought, though. Maybe because if, if everything's always unknown to you because you can't picture it, I, that's what is it? What does a ghost smell like? I imagine bad, but it's hard <laughs> to say. My brain just cannot wrap around a fantasia. Like I get it, but I don't. Like it's hard for me to put myself in that situation because I can visualize. So like I can describe something, but then I kind of picture what I'm describing. To not have that would just kind of confuses my brain. It, it's just a dead end. I can't get past.
Mm. That's interesting. But to kind of wind this back to the the horror, what's scary, what's not. I already wound it back beautifully to horror. What do you mean, why did I He really did. He really did. Yeah, he did. Yeah. But we're getting back to the descriptions here. That goes back to fear of the unknown. We have unsettling things like the, the smiles, the naked, the geometry. Seeing someone, feeling someone peel apart your head and pulling. That's, that's unsettling. That does, that's very unsettling. I think unsettling things can be scary. I think jump scares are scary when they're used correctly. Mm -hmm. You can overdo it with jump scares where they just get annoying or you just get like frustrated by it. I know we've both played some horror games, Mark, and I, Bob, you've probably experienced things, movies, shows, whatever, that have too many jump scares or watched people play it. They get me every time. Never see it coming. They get you, but like eventually they become less scary and just more like fucking stop like i don't know i get that emotion with it where it's like enough can you do anything that's not just a jump scare that's cheap like, it gets cheap after a while yeah it's the same as like if someone shines a bright flashlight in your face they go Poof. you're gonna go ah why are you doing that it's, it'll make you react it's just not yeah. scare yeah eventually the horror part of it, it just becomes like a knee-jerk reaction and you get angry about it mm -hmm. but i think when used correctly jump scares are good i think tension building of tension both with sound with sight sometimes whenever we know something like a character doesn't like we know something bad is around but a character is just like waltzing through a park in the fog at night and it's like don't you know like the serial killers in here what are you doing why are you here and they're like oh my phone's ringing it's like don't make noise sometimes that tension can be scary because you you know something the other the other character in the show or movie or game or whatever doesn't that can add fear i think tension's a good thing i can't live with tension if i was if i was a more outspoken person i would absolutely be someone who yelled at movies because i whenever <laughs> whenever i'm in that situation where i'm watching something and i know and the character doesn't internally uh, my brain is just like don't why <laughs> but on the outside i'm just sitting there like sweating just like <sighs> Ah, oh God. We need to have a group movie watch where we... <laughs> I know what's going to happen. Why is this stressing me out? I really do want you guys to see, once it's in a good state to actually watch all the way through, which is very close, I want you guys to see Iron Lung and just, like, gauge your reactions on it. I'm excited to see it. I'd be I'd be fascinated to see how you react to it. So that'd be fun. Yeah, I'd never so I didn't play the game and I haven't watched anyone play the game yet. So I, I'd be going in fresh unless I play it in the meantime. Oh, that'd be interesting. Okay. That's not a knock on the game. I just I've had a lot of things I do, and honestly, horror games or anything that's kinda like that. It's there's there's gotta be a reason for me to play, especially solo. Solo horror is not my vibe. Multiplayer horror, sure. But solo, I did Alien because I love the movies and the lore. And some of the other ones I played because I was just an idiot, but I don't like being scared at all. Don't enjoy it. All right. Boo! Ha. Got him. Nah, he's scared. You can see it. I, I want to... <laughs> I, I don't... I do and don't want to have the numbers effect now, though. Like, the numbers thing, the letters thing. No, I don't like that. That's not good. That seems bad. Well, that doesn't... That doesn't scare me. That's actually kind of fascinating. I have, I often just look at the light. I'm like, wow, that's weird. That's super weird. It's not really like, oh, oh the numbers! Oh, don't, don't walk towards it. When it's doing that, Mark, don't walk towards it. That means the portal's open. I've never tried that. I've never tried to get closer to oh, it. Oh, don't! I'm gonna get closer to it. Man, we never heard from Mark again. He he woke up at three in the morning from a crazy dream and the numbers were in the door and he was like, oh, I'll try it. And then he disappeared. This is this is fascinating. So if I do suddenly disappear for any reason, you all know why that I was not bullshitting about these numbers. FaceTime Bob on your way so he can see what happens. No, because if I do that, if I wake up too much enough to call someone, I think the numbers and letters would go away. It's more letters than numbers. So I don't know if numbers are scarier, but it's mostly letters. It's all bad. It's all, all a right. bad sign. Right. It's not good. I just got to jump in when there's Korean letters, you know, I gotta like, wait, okay. Cause there's very few <laughs> compared to all the English ones. So I gotta like, all right, okay, ha, okay. Ah! Oh, it's the Korean portal. I know I'm okay now. It just seems like rare. Like I'm trying to land, you know, on the double zero, you know? <laughs> it's the shiny version of weird number letter portal. Yeah, if I, if I gotta go for something, I'm gonna go for like the rare one. It can't be scary if I barely understand what they're saying. Unless that would be the death one is the rare one. It's like it mostly survive and then I, I'm aiming for the dead zone. I feel like there's a lot of speculation here about what would happen if you approach this door. All right, I'll tell you. I'll tell you if I make it, you know. And if it, and if he disappears forever, we'll know what happened. Couldn't be anything else. It's definitely the numbers portal. Just make sure your affairs are in order before you go into the portal. Nah. All right, never mind. Fuck it. Make everyone else deal with it. Not my problem. I'm dead. Or in another dimension. Either way. Man, we went through this episode fast. I guess we did kind of, we went off tangent, but kind of like borderline and then kind of brought it back for a while. I have a lot of different movies and shows, things I wanted to talk about. So let me just shout out Edgar Allan Poe has some really scary poems and short stories. 
it's kind of mind boggling when you read something really short, how even something like that's not very long or like drags you in can still scare you. Uh, I'm not going to go into specific examples because I'm too much to go over. Stephen King novels. I don't know if the first It movie, the, like the more recent ones, I don't know if it was super scary, but I really enjoyed the first It movie. Second one was okay. First one I thought was fantastic. Are You Afraid of the Dark? Haunting of Hill House. Shout out to those two shows. Haunting of Hill House might be one of my favorite horror things I've ever seen or been a part of. Horror movies, I had uh, Halloween, Friday the 13th, Psycho, The Exorcist, Shining. I did have Paranormal Activity and Alien on there. The Grudge and The Ring. Games, I think uh, we went over most of them that I had on my list. Outlast, Amnesia, Alien Isolation, Dead Space. I think the first Dead Space was pretty scary. Uh, FNAF, Silent Hill, Resident Evil. A couple of Resident Evils are scarier than others. But Resident Evil, Soma, Until Dawn. So shout out to some of those things that we didn't get to talk about. I also want to talk about something that's kind of like a fun little Catch-22 real quick. Catch-22 is one of my favorite like concepts. I read the book when I was in high school and I just love it. It's like whenever you are stuck in a loop and there's just not really a way to break the loop. Um, for example, in this experience the question would be in a horror movie did you see the monster or the villain if yes usually people would say the experience is cheapened because the monster can never usually live up to the hype or the fear the tension built up to its like release a few exceptions i think xenomorphs are pretty scary if the first time you encounter them but usually you like see the monster it's like oh that's what they're after that's not as good as i thought but if you don't see the monster it's like you feel cheated as an audience because it's like dude we never fucking even got to see what was getting them like we watched this whole two and a half hour fucking movie and they've been like hinting at this horrible thing we never got to see it well that's cheap and so the catch 22 is whether or not you see the monster it's cheap both ways so there's just no winning that particular thing i thought that was interesting because i hadn't considered it as a catch 22 but it kind of is because you really can't win whether you show the monster or not um man let me look at points here i agree points <laughs> i don't know i don't know if he can redeem himself that hard i think you both contribute a lot i think obviously mark has more experience in the horror genre but bob you got us on the whole like scary geometric dream yes my scary geometric dreams i talked about hey wait yeah wait what the fuck hey wait a minute no, no, i got the points for those that's how that worked wait a minute <laughs> oh sorry sorry that was mark let me move those points back no no those were my points you gave them to me already huh interesting interesting i see how it is i think we should both get the same amount of points for that because we were both basically i think you should shut up wait you know that last thing you talked about that's that's also called the cloverfield effect oh the cloverfield i didn't even think about that one that's also a good one bob points hey I didn't keep super like serious track of points and stuff, so everyone out there might be mad or whatever. But uh, I think it was a fun topic. I hope you guys enjoyed talking about it. I think there's a lot more to be said. But just trying to figure out what's scary, what makes something not scary. Because sometimes we'll play a game, watch a movie or a show, and it's like something won't be. And it's like, how did it fail? Why did it fail? Like, I don't understand. And then it's like, oh, now we kind of have more of an idea of why. It'd be fun to go on the flip side and talk about failed horror experiences too, I think. But alas um mark you barely edged out bob there by stealing back your dreams so bob yes. mark you are our winner yes. fuck your dreams fuck your nightmares mark that's all that's i have to say okay. about that that's okay that's next fair. time he's gonna beat you you can't beat me so who knows what i could beat but i'll try my best um for everyone who believed in me thank you for everyone who voted against me i will chase you down i will find you wherever you sleep wherever you hide wherever you go I will be behind you every step of the way. You think you're alone, I am watching you. And I am just waiting for the moment that you let your guard down because you didn't believe in me. But you better believe that I'm right behind you. You better believe. I gotta say, I think what put you over the edge for me is I actually felt very uncomfortable after listening to your nightmare about the camera and the brain peeling thing. Oh, it was a very uncomfortable nightmare, yeah. That, that was not a pleasant one. The actual feeling of horror I got from your description, I think, is just kind of what put you over the edge. Oh, good. Bob, uh, before you give your loose speech, I do want to say I'm sorry. I, I hate, I try to always come up with topics I feel like everyone can kind of contribute to. I kind of forget that you don't do a whole lot of horror stuff. So I put you at a disadvantage and I apologize. Mm, you don't mean that. I'm not going to do a loser speech. <laughs> I learned something this past week that makes me laugh endlessly, and I love it. There is a player in the NFL who plays for the Detroit Lions. He He's a defensive player, so he is always trying to sack the quarterback, for anyone who's not a sports person. He tries to run and get the guy who gets the ball to begin the play. He runs like Waluigi, and it's amazing. <laughs> like legs out. <laughs> yeah, no, literally, he rushes the passer like he's Waluigi, and once if you ever see it, you can't unsee it, because he's literally like, like, it's amazing. And I love every single clip I've seen. I don't care about losing this podcast because it's bullshit and horror is not even a real genre anyway. So whatever. Good topic, Wade.
I'm watching him run right now. Is it the little arm thing he does? Yeah, it's his arms. <laughs> he runs like Waluigi. Shout out to Waluigi, the Detroit Lions defensive end or outside linebacker. Uh, Every time he gets a sack, he jumps up and stands over the quarterback and goes, Wah! <laughs> <laughs> You can't hear it on TV, but he does it, and it's really funny. If he leans into it and actually does that, my god, that would be awesome. <laughs> Let's get that guy mic'd up. <laughs> That's, you can't, all the all the mic'd up guys are usually like, oh yeah, no dude, bro. Yeah, that guy mic'd up. He's just like, wah, Ouija. <laughs> Detroit Lions, I know you like to watch and listen to Distractable here on Spotify, so uh, please oh, just pass that along and please mic that player oh, yeah. up and get them to Waluigi. You don't have to give us credit. We just want to see it. We have the sway for that. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. Our reporter is down on the field. Who'd that be? Tyler. Tyler. Tyler is now our reporter for Distractable. Tyler, go to Michigan. <laughs> Tyler, you're going. To, you're going to Michigan. Tyler. Tyler, you're going to Michigan. All of our go my favorite sports team viewers and listeners, please also go over. And make sure Tyler knows to go to Michigan and record Waluigi. Don't tell him anything else. Go to Michigan. And record go to Michigan Waluigi. and record Waluigi. Let him know. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you guys so much for joining. Stay tuned for the next episode where Mark will host. And I guess we'll see you then. Uh, we have channels. Mark at Markiplier. Bob at MyScrum. I'm Minion777. Or Lord Minion 777 Merch. Do, do we have merch? No. Well, no. No. One day. But until then, podcast out. <laughs>
Okay. <laughs> I mean, it's in Cincinnati, so I sort of assumed I... <laughs> no, no, wait, you know what? Maybe you can come. Uh, I'll look. I'll look. Okay. All right. Well, thanks. Thank you for that. That really means yeah, a whole lot. Congratulations. You will have survived if you do. Yeah, I will. Yeah. Okay. All right. Wait, are you having a stroke? Are you all right? I might be. I don't know. It's definitely having some kind of episode. My throat hurts, but that laugh kind of made it feel better for a minute, so I kept doing it. <laughs> okay. All right. <laughs> well, if you guys are ready, I can get right into the episode here because there's a lot to cover. Because in the world of horror, there are a lot of tropes. Do you guys know mm. about tropes? Yeah. My favorite candy. I like the bright color tropes. You're talking about nerd tropes, right? <laughs> I really didn't want to laugh. I didn't. I really did. I can't believe anyone <laughs> laughed at that. Thank you. I appreciate that. I was trying to think of what kind of candy sounded like trope. And then you... I have to be honest, I didn't have that when I said it. So I, when you were like, <laughs> when I got, when you confronted me on it, I was frantically like, tropes, 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 ropes, 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 ropes. <laughs> yep. It worked really well. It was pretty good, almost like you planned it. Um, well, in the world of TV tropes and in the world of movie tropes and game tropes, we're going to explore them and tap into your knowledge of pop culture and movies and games, and we're going to try to isolate some examples of tropes. Here's how it's going to work. It's going to be more of a game show, and it's going to be quick fire, buzz in. Do you guys have buzzers? Sure. Yeah. I got some stuff I can use. Okay, all right. I'm going to give you an example of a trope, and I'm just going to throw one out there. For example, I'm gonna, it's called the Amusement Park of Doom, a dangerous amusement park where oblivious families and tourists visit at their own risk. Now, you guys buzz in and give me an example of anything. It could be like movie, could be game, where this trope exists. First one to buzz in and answer correctly gets a point. Buzz. Me, me. Buzz, me. buzz. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, do you not like that one? I'll, I'll, I'll try something else. I really didn't know you guys were pressing buttons. <laughs> I did not know that. Uh, me, 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 me. Uh, anyway, I believe I was first. Oh, I don't know about that. I have no idea, but sure, Bob, what do you got? Isn't, um, oh, well, shit. Isn't that... Uh, Zombieland, uh, basically have a huge amusement park of doom sequence in it. That's fair. That'll give you the point. I accept one. One point for that. It'll be one point for every answer. First one gets it. There is no limit. There is no order. You buzz in when you know. Buzz. I have one too. No, it doesn't matter. Oh, but I buzzed in before you asked the other question, so I thought it was still, you said it doesn't matter how many, and I, I buzzed. Oh, it doesn't, no, I mean like. Uh, the park, the video game, the park, where the mom's looking for her kid in late. the park. It's too late. Me, me. Me. Buzz. Uh, the part. Hold on. <laughs> Hold on. No. Dead Island 2. No, it, I said it doesn't matter how many there are per thing. You can only say one. And, and if there's any question, we will look oh, it up okay. and verify whether that fits that one. All right. Are you guys understand the rules? I gave yes. Bob one point there just to give him a start. The next trope. What happened to mommy? One of the protagonists has a friend or loved one infected with the virus or anything similar. Uh, in a fit of loyalty, they try to keep the victim alive and the infection secret. Smash. Bruh. I smashed before he bred. I, I know, I bred first. I know, Bruh. I heard the smash Bruh. way before. I, smash, 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 smash. I think I heard the smash before the bruh. And because you both are in the same city, the latency when it hits me is the same. Mm, I don't know about that. Wade's got broken internet, so that's probably an advantage. I do, I'm cheating. It's gonna be difficult because I don't know which ones you guys have. <laughs> 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 Have to get. Well, it's like a maximum of 12, so... All right, I think I heard the smash first. Wade, what do you got? The new Evil Dead movie that came out like two or three months ago. The mom gets infected, and she's like all creepy and weird, and everyone's like, Mom, you're gonna be okay. You're in there, right? And she's like... <laughs> I, I have a, a better one. What the fuck does that matter? Look, I'm gonna give away the point, but Bob, if it's incredibly better, maybe I'll consider it. Oh, it's way better. Shaun of the Dead. Is that incredibly better? I mean, it's a better movie. A way better movie. It's not a better example. A, we're not judging by the betterness of it's the just, movie. It's like an iconic movie. It's a great movie. Way better than the newest Evil Dead. But like, that's a small moment in the movie, whereas the entire premise of the new Evil Dead is like the weird mommy. 
I'm giving the point to Wade. Well Thank done, you. Wade. Now, I will allow repeats of titles, because obviously if it comes up, but it cannot, it, like, we can't oversaturate. We're going to ban them if they come up too much. Well, how we'll, we'll play it like that, just because I don't think you guys have an encyclopedic knowledge of your horror movies. I super don't. I know, like, four horror movies. Is this only movies? Or this, inco this includes games and stuff, too, right? Could be games. It could be games. Any horror media. Next one up. Uh... <laughs> Van Helsing hate crimes. Someone tries to kill monsters who aren't intending to harm or kill anyone. Dog wieners. Bob, I think. No, that was, yeah, that's me. Dog wieners. Sorry, I didn't <laughs> let it play. Dog, dog, dog wieners. Do, uh, dog wiener. Um, I mean, I, does it have to be a specific one? Because wouldn't it be any movie about Frankenstein and his monster? That's basically uh, the entire trope if, of that if movie. You can name, if you can name one specific movie about it, I'll give it to you. Oh, no. What's the one? What? <laughs> oh, you got five seconds or I'm going to let Wade steal it. The one with Willy Wonka. What's it called? The Ship of Theseus. No, Dr. Frankenstein. <laughs> and three, two... One Wade! The Bride of Frankenstein, which came out in like the 50s or 60s or something. I'll take it! I'll take it. That's a point to Wade. Well done. The ship of Theseus. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> anyway, next up, womb horror. Do I need to explain this one? Yeah, please. Usually, motherhood is seen as something nurturing and life-giving. Something to look forward to. Except in this case. This is when things get bad, creepy, or downright terrifying when it has anything to do with pregnancy taken to a disturbing level. <laughs> <laughs> um, that's me. <laughs> yeah, I know. Wait, wait what's... Okay, what's your... I don't remember the specific title, which is why I hesitated. But literally, one of the Aliens movies where Ripley is like the mom of the horrible alien baby. Mm -hmm. uh, after Alien and Aliens, it all kinds of blurs to me. You so. gotta name the movie, though. I know. I'm throwing it out there for the point. And if Bob can snatch it from me without cheating, he can have it. But Because you're very close. And I will accept it if you can name the movie. You have five seconds. Uh... Off the top of my head, I'm not going to think of it. I, all I remember is Alien Aliens and like Alien 3 or something. I don't know. That was correct. I had to think about that. It is Alien 3. Is it? I didn't even think that was actually a title. Is that really the title? That is the one. That is absolutely <laughs> oh, come on. <laughs> I had to think about it because you said da, 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 da. Hold on, I'm gonna look this up. Alien three. Alien three is the one. It's often forgotten, but I believe. Let me let me actually triple confirm that. Oh yeah, how did Ripley get pregnant in Alien three? That's a uh... exactly yeah. So Alien three, you are. Dude, I pulled that out of my ass. It's like uh, it's not gonna be called that, but it's like the third one. So. Mm -hmm. All right. Yes. <laughs> All right, deducting point for early buzz in. You know, you're what do you no, mean I'm early? Sure. That was a celebratory buzz in. I'm gonna start to get confused on who's buzzing in. All right, this one is related to the previous subject, but we are now. I'm going to ban the alien movies. The next trope: face full of alien wing wong. <laughs> wing wong? A creature reproduces by impregnating another species. This can be a literal pregnancy or a rearrangement of your DNA. Oh, okay. Without the alien movies. Mm-hmm. I'm. I'm. We're excluding the alien movies specifically the movies or games but yeah well, no wait sir yeah we're excluding the alien games get away from the alien as a franchise yeah yeah do it make <laughs> your dreams come true bob i guess i would i guess it's horror uh dracula the vampires reproduce well they can reproduce sexually with each other but they also create more vampires by biting them which changes their dna structure or something why was i thinking an alien specifically i think think is that i i'd be willing to accept it um because i didn't think of that one but that is a good point to expand more vampires the only way to do it and technically it would change the dna i guess yeah i mean it changes something about like your dna or something right yeah and i know it says face full of alien wing wong but it just says the the description is just a creature reproduces it can be literal or a rearrangement of your dna and i believe that vampirism it's either a curse or it could in some in some movies, it's like a rearrangement of your DNA. If I can come up with a better answer, can I steal the point? I don't think so, but... Oh, okay, we're changing that rule. Let me just look up, is Dracula, um, like, is that the name of the movie, or... I mean, there's a million things called just Dracula. Is, I'm seeing mixed stuff. 
Is this an article from the NIH? Is that where this is coming from? No, it's not. <laughs> but I'm seeing stuff that's saying vampires don't actually re reproduce by copulation, but uh, by biting. I mean, technically, reproduction is just making more of your kind. So, uh, wait, what is your answer? I think I'm gonna species give movie species. Doesn't she make herself like all hot so she can walk around and like seduce dudes? She's like trying to mate the whole time. You would be correct, and I I'm very close, but I think. Bob also qualifies. This would be That's a fair. debate because vampires do need to reproduce. And if you take like Twilight, they do just have sex. But I think people understand that vampires are like a creature that is not entirely human and they do need humans to make more of them. So I'm going to give they're it to like not undead, not dead, but not alive. So they're not like undead, but they're like cursed creatures. <laughs> it's I, I'll take the point. Uh, yeah, <laughs> vampire fans out there, take that! Vampires reproduce by biting. There's a guy out there adjusting his glasses right now. He's like, they, they, the canon entries where they bite to get more family members. They aren't actually reproducing. They are just simply making more vampires. Well, each, each, each cinema like or game can make its own rules. So I'll take it. But species is a good answer, and I've never seen species, so I have no idea. I haven't since the '90s when I probably shouldn't have seen it, but I do remember boobies. Oh. We do remember boobies. Speaking of boobies, the next subject is sex signals death. What happened? Wade? Friday the 13th, any of them? Nightmare on Elm Street, any of them? That's a good one. That Name was a, a specific one. All right, yeah, pick one. Friday the 13th. <laughs> Let me see if there was actually any sex in Friday the 13th. Dude, there is so much sex in all those. Those counselors are like, bam, bam, no, fuck me, bam, a lamb, whoa, fuck me, bam, a lamb, oh shit, I died, bam, a lamb. Oh, okay, all right, well... <laughs> Juliana Gill hot sex scene in Friday the Thirteenth uncut. Ah, man, I don't on Pornhub. There's a Reddit question that was saying like a friend told me the original Friday the Thirteenth movie sex scene is real and the actuals uh, the actors are actually doing it. So all right, okay, you get you get the not point. Not even was it a scene? They actually fuckled. That's not a sex scene. That's just a porn. The director said cut, and they kept going. Later they were like, "What happened?" I'm not gonna laugh at that. I'm not, they should. I'm not gonna laugh at that. <laughs> what happened? Next category, Orphanage of Fear. Any movie where an orphanage is evil and horrible. Mm. Oh, fuck, what was... Does it have to be a horror movie? A game or anything. Buzz. Do it! Make your dreams Weirdly, come true! Wade snuck his buzz in there just before you, Bob. God damn it. So I'm gonna do a weird one here. The song <laughs> okay. Total Eclipse of the Heart by Bonnie Tyler. In the end of the scene, there's a bunch of like choir boys with glowing eyes that float toward her. And it's a reference to a movie that came out like 10 or 20 years before. And I forget what the name of that movie is, but that combined reference and movie is my answer. Are you talking Bonnie Tyler's Total Eclipse of the Heart turn around music video? Okay, I'm I'm towards the end. They're at some boarding school or something. No, it's before that. Oh, there's Possessed Choir Boys. Okay, this is such a good answer. However, Choir Boys does not necessarily mean orphanage. Yeah, it does. Why else would they be in a choir? <laughs> I believe Choir Boys traditionally are part of the church, Wade. And where do you send orphans? Church to find Jesus. Uh, <laughs> that, that'll teach him for being an orphan. They need a father of some kind. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. It was such a good, like, potential for answer. I cannot give you the point because it is not an orphanage. It was very good, though. Bob. I mine might be a stretch, but I, I, this is this is the first thing I thought of, and I'm sticking to it. Okay. Um, technically, it's it's called an orphanarium. The orphanarium where Leela grows up in Futurama. <laughs> All right, I gotta look it up to see how evil it was. I uh, see that's the thing. It's not like horror evil. It's more like dramatic and depressing evil. They eat their shoes. He here's what I'll say about this. I do remember this episode of Futurama and I don't remember being any kind of afraid when I watched it. I remember laughing a lot and that might reflect poorly on myself as a person. <laughs> But I think it doesn't quite qualify as evil in the definition that I'm looking at right here. <sighs> that's that's 
fair. Yeah, so I can't give anybody the point here. It was good attempts. I wish it worked out, but it, I didn't think it would be. Now that I'm trying to think about it, I can't even think of anything where there's an evil orphan. Are the children of the corn part of an orphanage, or are they just... I have no idea. Are they just in the corn? Is the, is the corn their orphanage? They are not... Technically orphans, I don't think. They're like children who have families, right? That's the kind of... Yeah. Yeah, I don't, I don't know of a scary movie. I'm just going to take a stab at it. Can I take a guess? You can, but the points are no longer valid. I'm going to guess at some point there was a book, movie, show, <laughs> episode <laughs> called Orphan. Look, I'm sure there was an orphanage in some media. No, no, it's just the, the actual thing is called Orphan. Let's find out. Wait, we missed we missed the, the softball, but you're so close. In 2007, there is a horror movie that came out called The Orphanage. <laughs> Are you serious? Starring Balin Rueda, Roger Princep, Geraldine Chaplin, Fernando Cayo. Uh, this might not be an English language movie now that I'm looking at it. It is a horror movie called The Orphanage. Oh, it's called The Orphanato. Ah, that's not, that's not in English. But if you had guessed Damn that, it. if one of us had guessed that, you know, spot on. I found a real one. Supernatural Season 5, there's an episode called The Real Ghostbusters where there's some haunted ghost orphans that... Ah. Uh. Oh, there's also a 2009 horror movie just called Orphan. Ah! I get no <laughs> point, but I called it. Oh, uh, yeah. Wow. That is, uh, you know, so I think the answer to some of these is just to say the name of the trope that or distill it down as confidently as you can. And I'll look it up. And yeah, it will be that. Next category, the adject adjectival man. Go on. So you've got a mysterious and strange character that needs a name. Oh, it's a male? No worries. Just slap an adjective in front of the word man, place a the in front of it all, and bravo, you have a name. Let me bravo. I think Bob, I think Bob had it. These are really good clear buzzers we have here. <laughs> uh... No, well, so this this has got to count, right? And this is a movie and a video game franchise, The Slender Man. That I will absolutely accept. That is a great answer. I was waiting for someone to fall into the trap of the elusive man, and I was going to be like, that's not a horror franchise. Oh, no, no. I had from the X-Files, The Smoking Man. The Smoking Man. Ooh. Ah, that, that would have been interesting. X-Files is a good reference for that. This trope falls under the same category as names to run away from really fast, where it's so obviously named that they're bad that you just never would ever give them a, a moment of your time. All right, next one. Like old yeller. I think this one's self-explanatory. There's someone that's got to be put down and it's really sad. I'm only thinking of things we've already referenced. Okay. You can't, you can repeat. Wait. In Alien, don't they have to put a guy down who like gets possessed by the alien? I thought we were done with Alien. I, that's why I said no repeats. They said you could repeat. I just said for the one, but you're saying an alien? Oh, okay. Okay, okay. Don't they put a guy down? Maybe I'm thinking of a, a different alien, but I thought when they don't know. You are thinking of aliens where the guy is in a cocoon and they have to shoot him as a mercy kill. That is incorrect. In original alien. Oh, wait. No, actually, am I wrong? Was there also a cocoon scene in the original alien? Oh, my goodness. You might be absolutely right because I remember that from aliens. No, there was cocoons in the original original alien damn it and they mercy killed him with a flamethrower you are absolutely right i was gonna say i don't remember the bullets the bullets was aliens the flamethrower sounds right yeah i apologize wade i was under the wrong assumption there that's okay there's a lot of similarities and differences in those movies it's hard to remember i had a good one for that oh what, what was you yours share it that's the walking dead there's a lot of mercy killing in there a franchise based around mercy killing characters you like yeah and also unmercy killings and or Characters you hate. Well, yeah, whatever. There's a mixed bag of characters. Yeah. But they all die, basically. All right. Now we're going to say the Alien franchise has been tapped. We've done That's a bunch fair. of Alien answers. We're going to move away from that. Uh, We have this next one. Sudden sequel death syndrome. A survivor in the first film is killed off at the start of the next. I know several examples of this, but I don't know if it's the very next sequel or just a sequel. I will give you five seconds. Smash. Wade. Is it Nightmare on Elm Street? The survivor of the first Nightmare on Elm Street dies in the sequel, which I can't, I don't know the name of the sequel unless it's just like another Nightmare on Elm Street or something. I'm looking it up. I thought the girl who survived was like killed to start it. Uh, survivors of the movie Dream Warriors. I didn't no, say well, Dream Warriors. No, that was Warrior. your guess. You don't get another. Hold on. Let's research this. 
I have no idea how to verify this without pulling up the movie. Good God. Can you tell me how, like at the beginning of the movie, how it was described? No, at this point, it's been so many years. Or is it just like, was it a completely different cast? It was like the very start of the movie. I think she's like watching TV or something like dozes off and dies. And that's like how it starts. Okay. That might it's be. like something at the very beginning. So if it doesn't, if she doesn't, if, she, if they don't die in the beginning of, I guess, specifically the sequel. Ooh, I know how to look this up because usually on, I, I don't know, I didn't see this on this TV tropes, there's a list of examples of where it is. I think I might be wrong about it being the sequel. It might be a later one. Yeah, it's not in the list, but that doesn't mean it's not there. Maybe she dies at the end of the first film and I just think it's the sequel. Yeah, I'm not seeing it. I am not seeing it. Um, and I'm not able to verify that information. Oh, that's fair. So I think I'm going to have to give Bob a chance at this one if there's a more clear example. Oh, shit. I had thought of one, but I, I don't think she dies. And I haven't thought of another one. In the newest Exorcist movie, the woman who was the girl who was possessed in a previous movie comes back. But I, I think she just gets stabbed in the eyes. But I think she lives. Mm, interesting. Again, very the Exorcist? The Exorcist Believer, the one that came out this year. The One of the characters in that movie is an, a grown woman who was a possessed girl in a previous movie. Oh, who was it? Was her name? And Dowd, maybe he played. I don't know. Yeah, but was it directly like? Because I'm assuming the prequel to The Exorcist Believer would be just The Exorcist, and the only girl that was possessed there was the child. I have a second follow-up guess if Bob's isn't right. Again, this is difficult because I have no idea how to verify it. So I think I'm just going to call this one a wash because it's difficult to verify. I was also going to say Final Destination was the example I had in my mind in Final Destination 2. The main character from the first one is mysteriously killed off in the very beginning of it in a newspaper clipping. It's not even shown on screen, but it is emphasized. I hated the first movie so bad. I never even watched the other ones. It's Did you hate it because it was gory or did you hate it because it was bad? I hate it because it was cheesy. As soon as I saw a floating wire go after somebody, I was like, you know, I don't think this is the franchise for me. A floating wire? Which one? Like someone's that? shaving, like something gets unplugged from a wall and the wire goes and like wraps itself around their neck and like chokes them. That's Final Destination 2. Maybe that's the one I saw. But I, I saw that scene and I was just done with, I was like, you know, no. Oh, no, wait, that is Final Destination. There, I think that happened multiple times in the Final Destination franchise. It probably did. There's many, many, many one. Of, but I remember distinctly there was the guy who won the lottery in Final Destination 2 that had that and was like, whoa, whoa. But I think also Final Destination 1, he also got strangled by a cord. It was like in a bathroom, I think, or something. It was like, yeah, something know. like that. Okay, probably happened in either of them. But I'll consider that a wash. We're not going to give anyone any. This is tougher than I thought it would be. I thought some of these tropes would be easy yeah that was a tough one some of these are are pretty tough i i i think that it's uh it's interesting just to see because i love the names of some of these so but just because the name is interesting doesn't mean that it automatically is something that's easy to find we're gonna do that one a wash no one gets points torso with a view killing someone by shooting a hole through their chest and the camera looks through the hole smash who was that <laughs> smash Me. All right, Wade. Does it have to be specifically the chest or can it just be shooting a hole through them? It says torso with a view. So it's specifically torso. However, let me look and see if it, because I think you're thinking of head, right? Yes. Wait, uh, Bob, would you accept a example of through the head? Yeah, that's pretty fair. And this one, I don't even know if it's actually right. So you might be able to say I'm wrong on this one. But okay. the, the, the most shocking, I think, thing I've ever experienced was in The Walking Dead when Carl gets shot in the eye and it goes straight through his like head. And I think you have a back view of it, if I remember right. Maybe I'm wrong. But like, I remember when Carl got shot in the head and like you see his like face and just like you can see through his eye. It's like, dude, no way. But he didn't die. Oh, do you have to die? It's it's killing someone by shooting a hole through the chest. I'm already uh, stretching it to get the head. Okay, that's fair. That's fair. Okay. Bob. Uh, uh, yeah, no, that definitely happens in um that definitely happens in a scene in Resident Evil. I want to say for the movie no the game isn't there a sequence uh, it might be the wrong game isn't there a sequence in that game it's like a dramatic sequence and p part of the climax is like the camera goes behind the antag the antagonizing character and then his chest gets blown out and like the protagonist is like standing there on the other side it's a fuzzy memory i haven't played that game since it came out the first time i had never not played the remaster <laughs> i'm trying to look up resident evil 
four through torso. I'm looking in the video game list of this trope. I do not see uh, Resident Evil on this list. And I don't see anything about Resident Evil 4 having a shot through the chest with the camera looking through there. I can't verify it, but I'm, I don't remember that occurring. Then again, Resident Evil 4 is the one that I didn't play. So honestly, that's literally the only one that I haven't played. So if it was in there, I would not know. In Resident Evil, I don't, I don't know if I've seen, I've not played the games, all the games, to be honest. I've only watched them. Mm. So it's hard for me to remember. I could see it happening in a movie. I, I'm sure it does happen in games, but like, I can't think of specific examples of games. I'll call this one a wash as well, because I can't verify 100%. And I don't think that either of them kind of hit it. The easiest answer would have been Mortal Kombat. Does that count as horror? Does this have to be horror or not? Mortal Kombat is a pretty horrific game. I guess technically it's not necessarily an action franchise. You, you know what? You might be right. I would be wrong about that. But I think the fatalities fall under a certain brutal nature of them that is is typically in They're definitely gory. It's definitely gory, which isn't always horror, but it's like it's rated M for mature for sure. But I would have accepted that from you guys. We're going to call fair. it a wash. Next one. Toilet horror. Bad things happen in the bathroom. <laughs> my old life. Is that you buzzing in? <laughs> no, that's just me reminiscing <laughs> on the old house. Uh, the word memory or bring up a memory. <laughs> Sorry, I just had that. That was just on my soundboard from before. Yes, Bob? It's it's maybe not a horror, but it's definitely like a thriller and scary at this mm -hmm. part. Uh, the guy in uh, Jurassic Park who gets T-Rexed out of the bathroom. I think that is perfectly acceptable because for many people, the Jurassic Park dinosaur escaping sequence part of that movie was one of the most scary things they had seen up until that point. I ran away when I was a kid watching that. That, that was a terrifying scene. And yeah. that, that is exactly the one that I thought of when I looked up this trope. Toilet horror is embodied by that poor guy on the toilet getting munched. I think that's great. Next one, sinister nudity. Nudity used as a signifier of villainy and horror. It's maybe not a horror, but it's... Sorry, I just had that on my soundboard. Uh. <laughs> Wait, who was that? Hey, was mine, that? mine was from a previous episode. That was from five seconds ago. Oh, what do you mean? <laughs> no, that's my buzzer button, man. I mean, I buzzed in. I said that, Mark. That was me buzzing in by saying that. Ah, okay. I see how it is. I mean, not horror, but it's... <laughs> <laughs> no, no, we just went over Wade talked, and that wasn't buzzing in. Wade, what do you got? Uh, have you seen the movie Hereditary? <laughs> I <laughs> Mm, okay. There's some scenes in that movie where there's some pretty horrible nudity, man. It's oh, pretty terrifying. Wow. I will accept that it's horrific nudity in that one. It's very horrific. Have you seen the images? You oh man, them. it's it's awful. Next category category. Eye scream! Any horror sequence involving pain or trauma to the eyes that induces screaming or terror. Smash. Do it! Make your dreams come true! I did hear the smash first. I heard it that time. Wade! Dude, there's so many moments in Walking Dead that involve eyes. Uh, the governor. The governor loses an eye to Michonne. There's so uh, many times they push in eyes, and I, there's a lot of eyes. I want you to name a specific one that is horror-based. Because there's many media where people lose eyes. There's many moments where l eyes are lost. And I want you to name a, a specific one. And it can't be Carl, because you just, you burn that one. You don't count the governor being stabbed with by Michonne. I mean, it's not a monster doing it, but the governor is a monster. Let me let me look it up because I'll like, all right, uh, governor, I stab. Isn't that just a big fight scene? I mean, yes, but if it if this specifically has to be a moment where it's involving the zombies. No, if it's if it's horror based, if the moment is horror like centered, that's what I'm really looking for. Well, I don't know if I would count the moment as horror centered, but like the, the show is. It's an action sequence. It's not a horror sequence. So I, I would have to co concede that can't accept that specific one. It is it is close because the whole show is horror, it, but, I, but it's also not. It's like more of drama and like the survival. There are some horrific moments. That's why I was like, if there was a horrific moment about it, then I would have accepted. But I I am looking at it right now. And it, it is more of like a standoff kind of like fight moment as opposed to a specifically horrific thing. I, I have what I think is a unique one that I'm hoping you will accept. All right. The brainwashing scene from Clockwork Orange. Ooh, that 
is a good example. Because that's not strictly a horror movie even, but I would say that scene is meant to be like terrorizing and horrific. It is because I think that sequence is specifically is intended to be traumatizing for the sake of trauma. And it's so centered on the eyes, like holding the eyes open. I've never seen them. Clockwork Orange. What? I haven't even seen Clockwork Orange either. I mean, I haven't seen it in a long time. It's it's like a distant memory. I've seen people make fun of these scenes, like where they pry people's eyes open, but I've never seen the actual. That's how that's how iconic it is. I thought you guys would have mentioned the Dead Space 2 eye scene. Never played Dead Space 2. Or never played any Dead Space game. Bob, have you not played Dead Space 2? I watched you play the, all of the Dead Space games. I never played them myself. That's one franchise I have never watched or played. I've watched every video series you've done, including the remasters or whatever, the re-release that came out when you played it i like the games i just don't play them myself because they're scary they're scary mark that's true but i think clockwork orange because and this is the reason everyone audience at home i know i'm not playing favorites here but oh one they're is, gonna be angry one is a fight sequence one is strictly like a psychological horror sequence and it's like we're trying to keep it two horror moments so i'm gonna give bob the point on that one all right so we've gone through diddle 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 <laughs> The Secret of Long Pork Pies. Do any of you want to guess what this one's about? Me. Who was that? Me. <laughs> Thank you. Me. Damn it. Me. Uh, Bob, okay. I feel like that's cheating. He asked if you wanted to guess, damn it. I, I haven't even given what the description was, but yeah, do you know what this is? The Secret of Long Pork Pies. I mean, I know what long pork is. That's what you call, that's what you call human meat. There long, you go. Long pork is cannibalism. Um, and I would say uh, it's it's perhaps kind of uh, funny and musical, but um, the Demon Barber of Fleet Street is a horror themed musical based around long pork and pies specifically. I, I'm almost certainly giving you the point for this one, but I have to ask a question because we've qualified this for is Demon Barber of Fleet Street specifically horror. So I guess what I'm referencing most specifically is the Sweeney Todd movie starring mm -hmm. um, Johnny Depp. Because that's the most recent thing I've seen of that. I would not say it's like a horror movie writ large, but the scenes involving killing humans and feeding it to other humans yeah. definitely have the horror vibe of like body horror, gross, disgusting, like... I think well, the reason I'm going to give it to you is because Damon Barber of Fleet Street is a musical, and musicals have categories just the same as everything else does, but the nuance between them is hard to differentiate. But if you had to categorize a musical horror i think demon barber of fleet street might fit that more than anything else because there are not many musical dark themed stuff like that so i think i'm giving away do you agree with this i'll leave it up to the subreddit to decide for context if you google it a lot of places seem to describe the sweeney todd movie uh the tim burton movie uh, specifically as in a musical, an adaptation of a musical in the form of a slasher film. And I would mm. say slasher is definitely horror adjacent. Definitely, yeah. And, and the things that I just looked up are like, on the, like Sweeney Todd is being discussed on the horror subreddit. So I think it qualifies. And I'm going to give Bob the point there. Next trope, science is bad. That's so many. God, why can't I nail? Next trope. Bob! No, this this movie has been on my mind the entire time because I want to reference it because it's possibly one of my favorite horror movies of all time. And I'm realizing now that it, uh, hopefully this counts. Jason X. Jason X is cryogenically frozen for 400 years. He is discovered on the original Earth, which is too toxic to be occupied. Humans now live on a planet called Earth 2, but there's a space station and a researcher and his interns go down and discover Jason and take him back up to the space station, so on and so forth. Jason in space. Holy shit. The movie ends with two teenagers next to a lake on Earth 2 watching a shooting star fall. And then Jason sinks to the bottom of the lake they're sitting next to. Amazing movie. I love that you said Jason X. I have seen so few Jason movies. Jason X is one of the only movies that I've watched more than once it's a it's an interesting watch the the image of that android's nipple falling off is burned <laughs> into my brain <laughs> i don't know why maybe because i watched it at a young age it was like booby and then it was like the nipple fell off and i went <laughs> <"Hur>, <laughs> 
I'm just like, I remember that very So much. the science from bad is, the, and that is what? The fact that they just preserved him? They cryogenically froze Jason. Well, so they experimented with how to kill him, right? And they eventually cryogenically froze him because they couldn't kill him. But then they are trying to dissect him in the future. And that's what leads to him being reanimated and coming. And, and then they, through science, gave him like Terminator style, like shiny metal. On, I don't yeah. remember. It, was, it wasn't covering his whole body, but his mask was definitely metal. It was an interesting choice. The sleeping bag scene, the the murder scene in the hollow deck is like, I know it's a meme, but it's so fucking funny. I don't even remember. I might have blocked that part out. They try and distract him with a hologram of the, his like home. Right. Th- and there's two teen girls there and he kills them by putting, stuffing one into her sleeping bag and beating the other one to death with the one girl <laughs> in the sleeping bag. But that's when he figures out it's a simulation it's a simulation it's not real and he starts to like actually get out it's just such a just this the shot of him swinging the one sleeping bag into the other it's like classic i was that whole this whole time i was like i have to do jason x it's gotta come up that's good <laughs> Uh, next one, I'm gonna start just giving the names of them and you have to like guess what the meaning is because some of these are pretty obscure, but I think it can, I think it gets the point across. Nightmare Fuel Coloring Book. Nightmare Fuel the Coloring Book. The Secret of oh, Long damn it. Pork Pie. <laughs> I think you have like half a second. God damn it. This is a guess. I'm not super clear on what this is, but I'm just gonna put this movie out there because it's definitely scary. Pan's Labyrinth. Eh? Pan's Labyrinth. Does that count as... It's a scary movie. It has scary moments. I think you're missing what this trope is, though. Okay, yeah, I know. I don't really n- know what that's getting at. I gotta be honest. All right, so Wade, do you want to take a stab at it? Nightmare Fuel Coloring Book. Well, you don't have a guess? You just rung in to just beat me to it? Well, yeah, I was I was like, Bob's gonna ring in right away and I'm low on points, so I have to... Okay, I'm gonna take a guess. I have two different guesses. I'm gonna tell you what my two different guesses are as to what it means, but I'm gonna stick with my one answer. Okay. My one answer, I'll say, is the ring. My guess as to what it means is coloring book either means it's like a really psychedelic murder where there's just like a lot of shit going on, like on a dance floor or something, or that coloring book references child. I don't know which one. Child in what way? So in the ring, the girl is like a child with like the dark hair who kills everyone. So I'm going to say it's the evil child. Oh, oh, wait, I think I get this. It's when a kid starts drawing really horrific shit in a movie as a as that a, happens in the ring. The kid draws yes, the thing. That is the correct description. And that is a correct movie. I will give you the point, Wade, because you named the correct movie. Hey, you didn't say he needs to understand it. He's he's right. Yeah, he deserves exactly. that. He is right. It's just like, but Bob, you are correct. That is the meaning of it and he just so happened to pick a movie with uh, with drawings in it (laughs) i picked the right movie for the right reasons exactly so wade you do get the point there congratulations uh good job for you that's that's just by name that's tough because that could be so many different things it is it is a little tough i could make these i could make these where you don't know the meaning double points we could go into like the double final round whatever you want to do is your thing i i just find it fascinating make it competitive I'll make it competitive, but it's already very competitive just going like point for pointer. I think I think I don't want to ruin it with by doing doubles. I think this is fun. This one is obscure. I like, but I think the title is pretty clear. It just might be hard to find a specific one for it. So oh. I'll keep it pretty broad. I hate you, vampire dad. <laughs> oh, I have some examples I can think. I, okay, you know what? Buzz. All right, he buzzed. I don't know if this counts. But I think the movie, my interview with a vampire, there's a kid vampire at one point who like betrays her family and then they put her in a hole and the sun comes up and they kill her off. That is the right movie to pick. I don't think that's specifically the right characterization for that moment. There, uh, Literally, I hate you, vampire dad means anything where a creature that is sired another creature by any means, specifically mostly vampires, rebels against their sire. And in that movie, there is a lot that's where... She, well, she does. They all do, exactly, but she yes. does too. No, I'm giving you the point for that one. That is a great and perfect example of this trope. Okay, I named her specifically because a, a dad I thought might be able to be more vague, but I was like, okay, maybe it means a young... Mm. So I was thinking of the kid. Okay. All right. That that is I don't know why that movie was on my mind. I actually looked something up about that movie like a few months ago and I was like rereading it because I watched it in the 90s and I didn't remember half of the weird shit that happened in it. Other than that scene was so gruesome. I think they're remaking that one. I don't know really? why. 
but I think I heard that they're no, it's a TV series now. They they made it into a TV series for some reason. I don't know why. I can't believe I came up with that. Reference. It's so weird that that I guess it's synchronicity because that was the one weird movie that came up with. Like I was talking to my sister a few months ago and that came up. It was a pretty good guess. It's gruesome watching that poor little girl like in the sunlight. It's mm -hmm. pretty awful. Bob. No, not Bob. <laughs> Sorry. I'll take a point. What? No bias Markiplier over here. Oh, so I just went into like back and forth. All right. Next one. Next one. Orifice invasion. Me. Bob. Uh, well, this is what I thought of first, so I'm going to stick with it, even though I'm having second thoughts. This is not strictly a horror movie, uh, but the, the, oh, what's his name? The bug in Men in Black who wears an Edgar suit. He, mm -hmm. he, there is a lot of orifice inning and outing of little alien bug bits and things. And I would say that that is like a horror aspect of that character because he's supposed to be terrifying, but also comedic. I, ooh, I'm so, like, I'm on the fence about this because, yeah, you're right, there are horrific moments in there. It is still, like, mostly a, kind of like a drama comedy, almost. It's not pure comedy like the sequels were. It's got a little bit more drama-esque to it, but it's still... I think I have a better example. Yeah, I don't know if I could give you that one because it is... Well, okay. Oh, man, I'm, I'm so torn because the moment that I'm thinking of in that movie is really horrific. It was when Edgar gets you know when he gets slurped he gets and then it goes it, okay wait what do you think that moment it's horrific but is that an orifice that particular moment because that's when he just gets the suit in general that's not necessarily like orifice to me is like nose hole mouth ear hole eye hole it's something like specifically an orifice let's look at the the official definition here because i'm like okay. yeah because that would that would help us a lot because we don't know we're, we're just guessing based on the name a creature basically forces all of itself into someone oh uh but through an established opening of the body, as in naturally, not a cut or a piercing. And the Edgar thing, I almost would have given that for horrific, but because the definition is that it's natural orifice and not a cut, I have to say, Wade, you have a chance to get the point here. So I don't remember the specific episode because there's 15 fucking seasons, but in season six, I want to say of Supernatural, there's an episode where the mother of all has created this like little worm thing that like crawls into people's ears and like takes over them and they have to be electrocuted to kill the thing that's in them so it like slurps back out. Mm -hmm. Say, what was the name of it again? Sorry, I've, I've like blanked on the- Supernatural, but I don't remember what the episode was. It's in season, I wanna say it's in season six where the mother of all is like the main villain, Eve but she's like the mother of all. She creates this like horrible fucking thing that has to be electrocuted out of. Like the like the little matrix bug, bug thing? Like that? It's like this little like skimpering thing on the ground. Let me find... Yeah, if you can find a clip, like, cause I could just, cause I know Supernatural is like about Supernatural stuff and it has horror moments. So I would just like, I would judge that specific moment to be like horrific. It sounds bad, but I just want to do my due diligence. Con worms? I think that's it, yeah. The episode was called The Things They Carried. Con worms are a thing in the supernatural universe, a new type of monster created by Eve. Yep. There is a, there is one in six there. I, I thought I had a clip here. Do you have an episode name, Bob? It's called The Things They Carried is the name of the episode, I think. Season six, and then there were none, and Mommy Dearest. Uh, and then there were none is the episode in season six that they appear in. They're mentioned in the other episode in season six. I have no idea. I can't seem to find an episode based on this. I mean, I've got a, here, I've got a link I can share with you. <sighs> There's a mention of Supernatural in this trope, in this specific trope, but it's not this moment. It says, in Supernatural, demons usually enter their meat suits mouths as smoke. Oh, here, 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 here. I've got, I don't know why I'm helping you, but here. This is a, a, a pirated clip on YouTube, I'm assuming. Okay. Oh, that's that. Yeah. Okay. That's, that's horror. That's, that's, that's awful. The whole episode, I think that's, that's, less, I think it's the same worm, but a different episode. The episode I'm thinking of is like, they're stuck in the dark and they don't know who to trust because it just keeps infecting different people. And they have to like figure out how to stop them. Okay. All right, then. This is the final question. We are all tied up and you can count my math. I'm almost positive that everything is all tied up. And for the record, I gave Bob a bonus point at the beginning. I forget why, but it was for flattery or something. I earned it. No, no, no. He got a point right off the bat. That's right. From the yeah. tester one. That was what it was. Because I earned it. Yeah, absolutely. This is going to be the final category. I'm just going to give him the title of it. I'm not going to give any explanation to it. If, if anyone gets it, if they don't get it, we'll do another one. But this is the last one. Whoever gets this wins the episode. The trope is, you're gonna regret eating me. E.
Bob! Uh-huh. Yeah, I have one in my mind that I'm thinking about. I have one that came to mind, but I don't think it's horror, so I didn't buzz. Right. Ah, god damn it. It's that. I was trying to do another Futurama one, but I don't think it's horror. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, everybody. Oh, are you giving up, Bob? What if I do two Futurama ones and maybe one of them's horror? <laughs> So the only thing you know is pure Futurama. That's the thing I know most about, man. I know more Futurama than any other pop culture thing in existence. That's fair. That's fair. All right. But not fair enough to get a point. Uh, but wait, listen. The the Poplars episode. They crash on a remote planet and they don't have any food, but they discover holes filled with little crunchy, delicious things that they decide to call Poplars. And there's a song that goes, pop a poplar in your mouth. You could say, it's a, it's a whole thing. It turns out those are infant creatures of the uh, lure of Omicron Percy I-8. Those are his children. Oh. And so they're eating millions and millions of Omicronian babies. It's our, you know, I was, mm. hello everybody. I don't think, because it's a horrific subject, but the way it's presented, again, I don't remember watching that episode and being like, ah! Ah! The culmination of the episode is that they decide they will eat one human for each baby Omicronian that was eaten. But it turns out they ate more Omicronians than there are humans. So then they're just going to eat Leela. And they're going to uh, eat her live on TV in a live broadcast. It's very I, scary. I, I, I love and appreciate your entry. But I don't think I can give it to you. Hello, everybody. Shut up, Mark's thing that Wade's <laughs> triggering. <laughs> Wade. I think it's season five of The Walking Dead. They come across a bunch of cannibals. And there's a character named Bob who the cannibals are eating. And specifically, they are going to regret eating him because he got bit and was infected. So whenever they eat him, they make themselves infected. Therefore, not only do they eat him, but they also are going to regret eating him because it kills them. I think that is an excellent example of this trope because it lies exactly into what the trope is. However, the trope does say it's usually about like saying it, you're gonna regret even eating me, but I think the spirit of the trope literally consuming something, and I didn't think that there would be an example of like humans doing it, usually it's like aliens doing it, but I think that- well, after they eat specifically his leg, they cut off his leg and eat that in front of him, he cries and then he starts laughing and they're like man's delirious and that's when he's like i got bit he doesn't say you'll regret eating me but like i got bit or i'm infected or whatever he says is like the equivalent of like they're sitting there like and like so they start fucking vomiting and shit and i think because i had to disqualify one because it was more action in walking dead i do have to say walking dead is mostly horror and this does lean into it like a, a whole bunch of cannibals e uh, regretting eating i think i give wade the point here and i think wade wins the round by really tuning into what that <laughs> trope was thanks bob's leg i gotta thank bob's leg specifically for this thank you bob's leg i don't even have legs so i don't know who you're thanking or whose leg it is i don't care because <laughs> I ate it. All right, anyway, cannibalism aside, congratulations, Wade. You really stormed into the victory circle, but... No, I'm just kidding. There's nothing. There's no handshake deals. There's no nothing. You win. Actually, Mark, I huh? yeah, wasn't going to do this. Okay. Since Wade seems pretty proud of himself and everyone seems to have ganged up on me, I do want to go ahead and cash that in. <laughs> Excuse me? Cash <laughs> what in? What's happening? I, you don't even really need to know. I just, I would like Mark to make me the winner and I think he knows why. Okay. That's what you get for being so smug about it, Wade. You should have just taken the win graciously. That is gracious for me. I've seen you win more graciously <laughs> than that. Not today. Go uh, Well, Bob, unfortunately, I don't recall having any handshake oh deals with you and I don't recall any outstanding you must win abilities. Subreddit, back me up on this. <laughs> Mark, Mark is effectively breaking a jinx. You're going to be cursed forever now. Uh, no, no. Wade, give your winner speech. Uh, Mark, that was a fun and very fair episode. I think that was very fair. So thank you for the fairness. Of course. Yeah, absolutely. Bob, you were a very worthy competitor. I think you were kicking my ass there for a little bit. And I had to squeak out a few wins there at the end to come back, but uh, it was a fun, honorable game, and I enjoyed myself very much, and apparently I need to learn a lot more about horror tropes than I thought. All right, that's well said, well spoken. Bob, any losing advice? 
Well, I think Wade should be embarrassed because the last horror movie that I watched was The Shining for the third time four years ago. And uh, I literally don't play horror games or watch horror movies ever. So you almost lost to someone who has no actual knowledge about the thing we were just discussing, purely guessing and using stuff that was barely horror that Mark just happened to give me credit for, right on the very fringe of even remotely being correct. I mean, most of my answers came from the Alien franchise. <laughs> like, I had like three franchises. Yeah, like, like nine. 90% of your answers were the Alien franchise or Walking Dead, so I guess you really just knew the important ones. Thank you. A uh, moral victory for me, really, on this one. I was impressed with your knowledge. You did very well. I, I was sad by how little I knew and how much you did. I think both of you should be embarrassed and ashamed of yourself. Anyway, thank you everybody so much for listening and watching this podcast. Hope you had a fun time. No, we don't have any new merch. Shut up. Stop talking about it dog wiener hello everybody thank you guys for competing thank you for watching we'll have more horror halloween whatever themed stuff because that's what we do here that's why my light's red that's why i got pumpkin light Ooh, that is nice that's why i've got us oh that Ooh, is terrifying scary yeah anyway subscribe follow check out more episodes we've got a bunch of funny stuff uh that we've done recently ignore the unfunny ones you can ask people which ones are not funny but definitely watch the un the, the funny ones check out these guys my scream lord minion 777 i'm mark black Thanks. Podcast out. What happened? Good evening, gentle listener, and welcome to Distractable. This episode, the Titanium Trio trip the trail to Terror Town. Whiskered Wade whops out his wheel and reinvents death battles. Beguiling Bob hates only 11 inches and busts out the killer cookie. Murderous Mark maligns Mr. Myers and agrees the pastry is paramount. From Robber Robert and Freddy to the senior Cenobite. Yes, it's time for The King of Horror Hill. Now sit back and prepare to be distracted and enjoy the show. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to another episode of Distractable. I'm today's host, Wade. And what's scarier than me hosting? Me hosting when I feel slightly under the weather. But that's the season we're in. I am joined by my healthier friends, Mark and Bob. Hello, boys. Hello. You assume a lot about how healthy I may or may not be. <coughs> you guys are in tip-top shape. Well, I am. I don't, I don't know what's going on with you guys. Made of titanium. Thank you. I got titanium in front of me. Does that count? Balls of steel. I thought it was titanium. Balls of titanium. This doesn't run with the tongue quite as well. You want your balls to really roll off the tongue. Testicles of titanium. How about that? There you go. TT. Look at my TTs! All right, for a more sane part of this intro, I'm doing well. I'm settling back oh, into being home, and you know, I'm just like relaxing, trying to take it, take it easier, get back into the swing of things on the channel. Good, life's good. I don't have any like crazy tech updates to talk about or stuff like that. Are you sure you don't have anything you're dying to talk about? No, there's no developments. I haven't bought anything. I haven't researched anything. I've just been reading a book. Wow. That's not very high tech of you at all. Are you reading it on some sort of futuristic mixed reality virtual headset? What if you went into VR to read a book instead of holding it yourself? You Dude, that would be so sick. Just sitting sitting on a couch wearing a VR headset just like... <laughs> uh, uh. It's like the book's really in my hands. Oh, the page is sticking. <laughs> all right, fine. I'll go on my latest tech interest. Yes, I knew there was something. Have I talked about how excited I actually am about Apple Vision? Uh, Apple Vision? Is that related to the, that's the Vision Pro thing, right? The headset? Yeah, I don't know why they're calling it the Vision Pro because it's not like any other version of it has come out. When we talked about it when it was announced, you were pretty hyped on it, but I don't really feel like we've talked about it since that initial thing. I wasn't super hyped on it at first because like it was just super unsettling with the picture in the screen there on the front page that's still there. Oh, that's right. The, the fake eyes. But I realized a unique case study where this would be incredibly useful. So price tag aside, again, most of the things that that I talk about are work related and I know that I'm in a unique situation where I get excited about my work because I love what I do and I buy things for that work to make it better and that's not a unique that that is not a common situation and I get that and I understand this and this thing is going to be ungodly expensive but I was on a plane 
to Korea, right? I was flying and I had to edit while I was going there. And I just had my laptop with it, me. Ooh. And it's good, you know, the laptop is powerful enough to edit while I'm in the air and on battery. And that's very nice. But what I realized the actual use case for that headset is virtual displays while I'm in my airline seat. And I went and I was like, ooh, if I was actually able to have high resolution displays on my headset and I was able to create multiple desktop based on my laptop, just beaming the image straight into my headset. And if it worked like without creating, without being on the same Wi-Fi with just a direct beam from the computer headset, because it's made by the same company, then that could be an excellent use case for that headset. That is a limited use case, but there are a lot of different versions of on a long flight where you need to work where that i could totally see that probably not completely justifying how hilariously expensive the headset is actually going to be but if you have the money and like it's a thing where it's your job and it's you and like like for me too this is a thing for me i love technology right so any excuse to buy technology that also serves me doing my work more effectively i'll take even if it's a little <laughs> Even if it's a little extra and not strictly necessary, because I enjoy very like it's a personal like thrill for me to have new technology to see how it works, to be able to play with stuff and have something that like not everyone is going to have access to. Probably not a lot of people in the entire world are going to have Vision Pro headsets because it's expensive. But like in a college dorm room type setting, if you're working in a lab, I know for me in law school, I had to work in the law library a lot. Because you need to be around the books, you need to be there. And there was, like, all I had was an 11-inch laptop screen to work on. I hated that. But there was no alternative. And yeah. you would look like an absolute goober sitting in a law library with a vision headset on, just being like, oh, wow. <laughs> but also, I don't care if I look ridiculous using technology, that would be extremely useful in those sorts of cases. I could totally see that. Especially with editing, because when you're crammed down to just like a 16 inch monitor and you have to have your timeline, your preview windows, which are tiny file management there to try to get assets in. And you, it, it does become a challenge to do that. And it does slow you down because you're not able to see everything. So having multiple monitors, everyone knows increases productivity. But this like having that portable is really interesting. It really is kind of necessary for editing if you're doing anything serious. I want to know what kind of college student can afford this. I could barely afford SpaghettiOs. This isn't a use case for college students. That's what student loans are for, Wade. <laughs> Non-subsidized, high-interest, soul-crushing student loans will buy me my Apple headset. Unbankruptable loans, yes. That'll follow you and your, your progeny. They'll never go away, ever. For any reason. Yeah, no, I mean, yeah. So this is a thing where like in 15 or 20 or 30 years or something, when, when the cost comes down, not Apple's cost, but when another company basically does what Apple's doing in a way that's way more affordable, then... Yeah, it'll be very viable for someone in like a student situation, potentially. What I am going to experiment with is I just got the Quest 3 in. I'm going to see. I know that's slightly better displays than the last one, um, but I'm going to see if that can do kind of a virtual display situation and if there's some software that can do that, because that is going to be much cheaper. But I don't know if it, how it'll integrate with Mac specifically. Have you seen the mixed reality stuff? There's like a piano. It's like Guitar Hero, but for piano. But you sit at a that. real yeah. piano. Piano, and then it just like it does the guitar hero like and then that that's the thing about the quest 3 i the mixed reality looks amazing it's had the pass through since like the quest 2 but the pass through in quest 3 was like black and white but it was infrared pass through it was yeah it was kind of bad and then the quest pro had a little better but the quest 3 actually is usable i was sitting on the couch with amy and i was we were watching a movie and i was watching the movies through pass through it wasn't <laughs> it wasn't great video quality but i could see all the details i could see everything and and everything was actually moving in in high frame rate in the pass through so it wasn't disorienting it wasn't sick it was just like mixed reality was actually starting to implement it wasn't great don't get me wrong, but... But good enough. Good enough, yeah. I wouldn't choose to watch a movie that way through that. You could watch a movie in the headset with the actual display, but... Well, that's the sort of thing, too, where it's like, if you're... Like, Mandy does this a lot. She'll work on the couch, and we'll both be on the couch. And she likes to have, like, TV on 
as like a background noise, right? Some show we've seen a million times, it's like, put an episode of that on. That would allow you to like be aware of what's in the room without it being a whole thing. Because I have a Quest 2 and I've made content with the Quest 2. Literally, I was in an open space and I needed, I just needed to walk over to the camera and like mm -hmm. push record. And I put the pass through on and I was like, oh shit. Okay, that's the camera. Yeah. Oh, oh, uh, like barely function to like avoid tripping over couches. If you're getting the Quest 3, you will be surprised with the difference that it makes. And the hand tracking has improved. It literally is better to control it. I don't think it'll quite be what, say, the Vision Pro will be, but it, as a much more cost-effective solution, it is it is an it is a marvelous improvement. I and again, for pa for people that don't know what this path pass-through is, there are two like five megapixel cameras in the front of it that are just there to look at your surroundings and project what's outside of the headset onto the display. It is not the actual display itself as if you had a desktop in there or watching a movie in there. This is there in addition to that. You could see the real world as if you're looking straight through the headset, but it's not, it is not a uh, see-through. It is a hard piece of equipment. It's just cameras. It's very, it's very cool. Yeah. So anyone that like plays any AR game on their phone, it's kind of like that where you see like a 3D asset in your camera's phone. If that camera image was displayed on the displays as well and also matched the space i was so resolved to i was like i'm not even interested in a quest 3 but now we're talking about it and in, and in my brain i'm just like i'm never going to use it enough to really justify it but what if i did i don't have enough boxes on my floor so i could really use it you know what wade i will get one and then i'll send you the box and you can pay me half price i'm like a cat I just want the box. And look, we're, we're not sponsored right now, but we will take a sponsorship. Yeah, <laughs> wanna, hey, better. Hey. Call us Vision, Vision Quest. All right, well, that's going to lose it. Mr. Vision Quest, please call us on the cell phone. It's it, This is a thing, too, where I'm sure I get all hype about it, and then if I actually ever have one or use one, it's like, well, it's not everything I actually want it to be quite yet. But I haven't used it, so I don't know. But as, every time there's a new like step forward in VR, it's like, Oh, that's cool. You remember when VR was the the virtual boy at uh, Toys R Us where you'd go back in the aisle and stick your head in the virtual boy and it was oh, like, yeah. oh, oh, yeah, uh, I think. I think I know what you're talking about. I have no idea what you're talking about. <laughs> That's like a core memory for me. You go to the video game aisle at Toys R Us and they have the Nintendo Virtual Boy thing. It's like on a big stand set up and you put your head in it and it's like you're looking at the vector graphics like eight, nine years old, I feel like. I don't remember that at all. Well, I lived a better life than both of you. I had parents who took me to do fun things and cared. Wow. I had parent who tried. To... I was too poor to ever go outside. Too poor to go to Toys R Us. We would look at it from the bus as we rode by. I would stare at the magazines that my neighbors were given. I was also too poor to have two parents. What a time to be alive. That's still a thing. Can you get catalogs and just like circle stuff? Probably, but they're probably like antique ones that are from like 2001. And I don't know if that's antique yet or not, but I hope not. From 1991. <laughs> yeah, I don't know if that's far enough back to be antique still. How old is it to be to be antique? Well, preferably older than me. More than, if an object is like over 50 years old, I think that's probably the cutoff for it being more antique. Because it would have to be like your grandparents' thing for it to be considered like an antique, right? So I think it has to be two generations removed, at least. Which is like, that's variable, but I feel like two average generation gaps removed. Oh, I didn't realize these were such specific uh, categories. Oh, is there? I didn't either. Antique is apparently over 100 years old. Between 50 and 100 years old is vintage. Oh. So that means that anything, what are we in, 2023 right now? Anything 1973 or older is vintage now? Yep. Is that how numbers work? Yes. Oh, well, that's plenty old. My mom is vintage. Hey. Well, if you'd have been paying attention to my lens rant, you'd know what vintage is. I was talking a lot <laughs> lens about vintage rant. lenses in there. You were, and I remember it. And you talked about the Rokinors. Yeah, the ones that people still believe that I actually bought. Yeah, I can't believe you spent that much money on lenses. <laughs> I, know. I couldn't be more clear. You still haven't showed us your collection, but that's fine, whatever. My collection? Yeah. Yeah, your dozens and dozens of uh, extremely expensive... Rokinor... Will you ever get a name right, Wade? Will you ever? 
Mark, what's your wife's name? Molly. Her sister watches this. I'd be in the doghouse if I got that one wrong. Your wife's name is Mandy. I'm sorry to tell you. Oh, that makes me Bob. <laughs> Good luck being Wade, asshole. <laughs> wait, wait a minute. <laughs> your hair just... Ah, ah, a beard. <laughs> well, if Wade is the host, then I guess I'm hosting the episode. Don't make me piss myself. I'll do it. Again? I Yeah, I, I've done it once. What would stop me? Hey, I got pee on my clothes this morning, so not my own, not my own pee. Human pee. <laughs> Great. <laughs> that's, a, that's a way you could classify that. I got human pee on me. Uh, you, you right. You right. Today's topic. Uh -huh. I have a visual aid to share with you all. Ah, uh, using crutches, are we? Waboom! Oh man! Everyone <laughs> listening at home has no idea what just appeared on screen. It's Wade's penis. Don't describe it. Don't describe it. Viewer experience. I don't think I described it. It's a wheel. Yeah, I, was, I thought someone was gonna describe it. Well, I mean, I said it was Wade's penis, and it is wheel-shaped, which is very strange. That's true, and I tattooed it to be Halloween colors. You, you could have just drawn on it with, like, a marker. I thought it was just orange and black, but apparently purple and green are also Halloween colors. Hollow penis forever. So today, I've got this fun wheel, and what this wheel will reveal on each spin is a particular monster or villain Halloween spooky themed. And we're gonna be spinning it twice and then talking about which creature, person, etc., would win versus the other. Ultra battle. Who gets what? Mm. Like who Yeah, do we have to pick a side, side or no, no, just... no, this is this is just another discussion one. I feel like I feel like it'd be less fun if we were just defending a side. I know Bob, you're not as big on like horror stuff, so I figure probably better to have a discussion and you can feel free to look stuff up to I know who Freddie Mercury is. Alright, good. I put Freddie Mercury on the wheel. <laughs> what a villain. We will not find that man somebody to love today. Oh. But you guys are going to be under pressure <laughs> to give some good discussion here if you want points. Get on your bike and ride, Wade. I don't have a title comeback, but well done. <laughs> you guys have any questions before I start? <laughs> are all the monsters just question marks? Or... Well, they're hidden so that you don't just see them all off the start. It should reveal it whenever it... Hey, it landed on question mark. Oh. We're starting off with Michael Myers. Uh, which which man is that? Michael Myers is uh. He's the William Shatner mask. Oh, okay, yeah, mm -hmm. got it. Usually pictured holding like a knife or something, but he uses all kinds of weapons. A machete, isn't it? That's Freddy. Freddy Mercury. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I think Jason is usually the machete. You know, Freddy Mercury is. You just hear in the darkness, stomp, stomp, clap, stomp, stomp, clap. <laughs> 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 you hear the scraping of the wall, but just him holding some piano keys. I don't know why that wouldn't set me so hard, but god damn it. If that ever happens in real life, I'm gonna run away screaming so fast. It could be terrifying if done correctly. All right, who's Michael Myers facing off again? Let's find out. I guess I didn't really think about what happens if I spin the same name twice. No, we got it. Oh! <laughs> We're starting off with a battle of the ages right off the top. Jason versus Michael. Jason Voorhees. So I've never been able to differentiate these two in terms of ability or power. They seem to do the exact same thing. Yeah. They're, yeah. Aren't they just kind of unkillable, strongish, big dudes? Typically, though, Jason's at least been cryogenically frozen. But he didn't die. Are we doing this death battle style where we take them at their most lore accurate peak? Because that's what they do, that which is a ridiculous thing, of course, but whatever. I don't know what you're even referencing, but... So Death Battle, it's it's a YouTube channel that... Actually, a 2003 <laughs> originated YouTube series. Oh, God, here we go. Uh, predates YouTube, but it is a YouTube series. So there's, there's a channel that just pins people against each other, makes them fight? Yes. All right, well, I'm gonna, I can't look great to read the subreddit about how I stole that idea. I thought you were doing it on purpose. I gotta be honest. No, I was just out of ideas. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, man, this Halloween topic thing's really tough. All right. Well, what they do is they they look at their most powerful moment in their official lore or any kind of media they were in, and they use that as the basis for judgment again in the fight. This is why anything going up against Superman, according to Death Battle, can never win because Superman's like most powerful moment is like DC Comics 
comics just going batshit insane with his power. He's like, he's got, he absorbed all the cosmic force forces. He ate God and shat the devil. And that's what Superman Prime is. And it's like, okay, whatever. Uh, I don't know that I necessarily care for all that specific, but we're not going to pick like Michael Myers, like on Halloween and Jason, like as a baby. I mean, that would kind of be unfair, so. Well, that's not his peak. Unless it is. Do you think that's Jason's peak power? I know. That's what I'm saying. Like, we don't have to do peak, but we could just do, like, their average, like, whatever. I don't care. Whatever you guys think. I'm not picky. I just want to know who would win in a fight, man. So Michael Myers wears the William Shatner mask and stabs people with a knife. Jason Voorhees wears the hockey, the old hockey goalie mask mm -hmm. and has a machete. Yeah. Michael Myers is like has like a jumpsuit, like a like a overall coveralls type outfit. Usually, is that what he looks like? Yeah, like a blue jumpsuit type deal. Now I will say their their weapons of choice. They both improvise a lot. They'll use whatever is around. You guys mentioned Jason uh, using the sleeping bag with a person in it to beat. Not in this episode. He's also used like spears or he's used all. Well, I mean, Jason X is still technically Jason, but I was just trying to break down the character. I'm just trying to think through it. I, I. Oof. So Jason wears like a brown leather jacket and like jeans usually, right? Kind of like a, like just normal clothes. Maybe. I don't know. Yeah. I think he gets them at the Gap specifically whenever he goes shopping. Ah, uh, ah. Uh. Whereas Michael gets his clothes from like a, you know, a Home Depot or a Lowe's type place sure 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 so does that affect their ability to win yes it's very important i feel like they're starting weapons i have to give the machete a, the strong start and like we talked you talked about they improvise a lot but assume they start with their weapon of choice uh, they're neither of them is like a super fast super agile like you know rogue doing flips and, and stuff so michael myers has a short blade and jason has a machete i feel like that's just a huge advantage if it's just two big strong slow moving guys coming at each other have you ever seen the videos because they, they like teleport around to be conveniently wherever the hero is running have you ever seen the videos of like them walking and like the hero turns around turns away and then like they take off running really silly to try to get into position for the next scare <laughs> no <laughs> <That's really funny. laughs> but anyway yeah they, they usually are kind of they're very similar it's a hard one to pick because they're very similar they walk kind of slow they have their weapon and they somehow magically are just always wherever the hero ends up when it comes down to just feats of strength i i think it's like jason just on camera not even in like you know the most hyperbolic sense but i'm i'm pretty sure i'm pretty sure jason has lifted some heavy shit and thrown them at unsuspecting teenagers so if it was a contest of strength but then again i don't know i don't know michael myers very well so i can't really speak to him weakness wise i don't know how much people put faith in the new halloween series but it seems like without the mask on michael myers was like kept in like a i don't know if it was like a, a, an asylum or what it, what it was but he was kept like somewhere and he was just like chilling without his mask on but then like once he got wind of where his mask was he like powered up again <laughs> Jason, on the other hand, was like drowned. So he is like a big water fear. And they exploited that in like Freddy versus Jason. So I guess they do have a couple of different weaknesses ish. But they've all been like stabbed, shot, cut, disintegrated, and somehow have come back. So, so wait, Michael Myers is just a normal dude without his mask. It's like the mask with Jim Carrey. <laughs> Whoever puts on the mask becomes Michael Myers. So. It, it was kind of again the new the new trilogy is kind of weird as far as that goes because it's, it's unclear whether the mask is really like what makes him scary or if he's just like got some demonic superhuman powers and they're just like quelled until he like wants his mask back. It might just be like he wants it. Maybe he doesn't need it, but he was definitely just like chilling in the uh, the prison or the asylum or wherever he was being kept. And then like a reporter brought his mask and was like, "Do you remember this?" <laughs> and he was like. <sighs> And then, like, the reporters leave, and all of a sudden he, like, breaks out, goes after them, and gets his mask back and puts it on. Then his terror continues again. So he didn't have it on, and he managed to go get it back. But, like, when that mask came into view of him, he was just, it was, I don't know, it was... I don't want to debate this anymore. Michael Myers seems lame. I'm Jason all the way. His crush, he's, he's right. ripping his mask off, and he's gonna just, like, when he depowers and turns into a shriveled baby, that's when Jason strikes the strongest. I don't know if Michael's ever killed anybody with water, so he may not be smart enough to do that to Jason, because that might be the one way to get to him, but... Can I just say, I, I'm looking up information about Michael Myers, because I felt like I didn't know enough. Mo I think I'm reading this correctly. One of the movies where he is considered strongest is Halloween 6, The Curse of Michael Myers, because it's like 
kind of supernatural. It tries to explain like why he's like invulnerable and where his power comes from, that he's evil. But also in that movie, he's defeated by a character played by Paul Rudd injecting him with a sedative and then beating him with a pipe. He did, one guy just knocks him unconscious with drugs and then beats the hell out of him with a pipe while he lays there. I think Freddy versus Jason was also, Jason was knocked out with a sedative in that one, but uh, that is kind of bad. But yeah, I mean, I haven't, I haven't looked as much as Jason. I'm assuming there are probably lame ones for Jason as well, but like, that's rough. I feel like Jason wins. Yeah. I feel like I'm with Mark. All right. You both agree Jason wins. We'll move on. I feel like we spent a lot of time on it, so we'll move on. Let us know what you all think, but we went Jason wins. Let us spin again. I just enjoy when it wheels spinning. Oh, Bob, you get to choose. Good. I know a lot of bad guys from <laughs> scary things. Well, while you're looking it up, I'll spin whoever you're going against. Maybe that'll influence your uh, mm -hmm. your choice to make an interesting competition. <laughs> Watch it be Bob's choice again. <laughs> Nemesis from Resident Evil. Interesting. Okay. Interesting. Interesting. <laughs> okay, okay. I've got a lot of names here, and I don't know that we'll get to them all, so if you want me to just to spin again, I can, but... No, no, no. I have found one. What you should have done is waited for him to get it and then match it up, because if he'd have chosen, like, a wimpy normal human and then Nemesis pops that's up... That's true. It would have been easier. I guess that's true. I was just trying to buy some time. I select the ginger dead man. The what? <laughs> Excuse me? <laughs> <laughs> the Ginger Dead Man is a reincarnated serial killer whose ashes were mixed into the baking of some gingerbread man. <laughs> He's a rude, crude <laughs> slasher out for revenge against the women, woman who had him executed. The movie was not highly rated, but spawned a host of sequels. But Ginger Dead Man was played by Gary Busey, oh, or voiced anyway. God. And there's also Ginger Dead Man versus Evil Bong and Hell Road with them. I don't know. <laughs> oh boy. The first quote that comes up is, Well, it sure ain't the Pillsbury fucking doughboy. <laughs> Millard Findelmeyer is the man who becomes the ginger dead man. Wow. The ginger dead man too. the passion of the crust. <laughs> oh, no, man. Ginger dead man three, Saturday night cleaver. Oh, wow. I love it. Let's we'll do a watch together of a uh, ginger dead man. His powers and proficiencies include gunmanship, knives, pliancy, and malevolence. <laughs> pliancy, I'm assuming, meaning because he's a baked good, he's very flexible and or crumbly. Apparently, he's just a real dick. His hobbies are torturing and killing others, robbing cafes, and being derisive and callous. <laughs> Derisive. Ginger dead man's like, you're ugly. And Nemesis just like, <laughs> I mean, he gets, he racks up five bodies in the first movie, six kills in the second movie, 15 kills in the third movie. Mm -hmm. Wow. And only three kills versus the evil bong. I was hoping that in the fourth movie it would just go up to a million, a million five hundred thousand and eighty nine kills. Jesus Christ. Okay, yuck. I don't like the character design. It's very off-putting, but that's kind of the point, I guess. Uh, and who, wait, so who's the, who was this against? Gentry? Nemesis. From Resident Evil series. Hmm. I don't know about that match. <laughs> <laughs> That's a tricky one right there. Does Nemesis have the rocket launcher? Yeah, that's, is that part of the character? If he's at his peak, what does his peak character have? Well, probably later in the transformations when he turns into an even bigger monstrosity. Nemesis final form. Let's see. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, boy. I don't know if Ginger <laughs> Dead Man's gonna f beat that. What? Well, how? How big is Ginger Dead Man? Help me out here, Internet. I don't know if he's as big as Nemesis Final Four. Because <laughs> I like I remember this because I made the thumbnail out of it. When was it? Is it Jill? Is it? Is that? That who is this? has the big fucking gun, the huge penis gun. You remember that? Just when she whips out and holds just with her two fucking arms, this gun that is twice as long as she is tall and like as thick as her torso all the way through, it has to weigh like a metric ton. Oh, I see an image of it. She just wheels it and that's what doesn't kill, doesn't actually kill Nemesis in his second to last form. Cause there was one more. 
more. But is she callous? Oh, she's saying you think I don't know how to fuck you up in that moment. So she's very callous. And Nemesis is she just, derisive? Oh, I don't know. Because <laughs> Ginger Dead Man is very derisive. I, uh, as much as I love... Let's put it this way. Jill beat Nemesis in final form by being a little derisive. Saying, you know, things like, think I don't know how to fuck you up and probably like, you really want to fight me again or something? Or like, you think you're going to win this time? Or is that how she won? <laughs> you remember. So maybe Ginger Dead Man, if he can get the right arsenal, because Nemesis did go down. You got to think about that. You got to remember that. I don't know if Ginger Dead Man can wield big guns. I feel like he would crumble. I, I will say I'm watching clips from the movie now. Gin Ginger Dead Man is is kind of about the size of like Chucky. Oh, he's he's, he's a he's an extremely large gingerbread cookie, but like a very mediumly small size thing compared to people. Here's what we gotta do. Bob, do you have a list of names of his kills? Because if he hit, if he killed anyone named, I think, is it Jill? I, it might be Jill. Ginger Dread Man has killed unknown woman, James, Jeremy, Jimmy, Lorna, unknown person, Ricky, Polly, Cornelius, Jake, Tommy, and or Demon Warrior, uh, scientist <laughs> number Jays one and two, Doreen, Connie, Sandy, unnamed janitor, female teenager, male teenager, female DJ, Tammy Pimento, Wheels Epstein, Coco Yoko, and PJ. Those are his victims. Oh, also, also Debbie, Debbie's boyfriend, and String. <laughs> There are a lot of J's in there, and there's a few unknowns, it could be. But no Jill. If it was gonna be a Jill there, I would have assumed it was Jill Valentine, and if 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 Ginger Dead Man could have killed Jill, then theoretically, by the transitive property, would have been stronger than Nemesis. I guess that's true. So our, since Ginger Dead Man didn't, are we leaning Nemesis? I, I'm I'm afraid we might have to. It's a close matchup. Oh, man, it, it is. But he killed Tammy Pimento. All right, let's look up <laughs> Tammy Pimento. See how strong Tammy Pimento is. <laughs> Got a recipe for pimento cheese. Oh. The pimento uh, uh, person. I don't know, but that's gonna work out. Oh, Tammy Pimento does not look very strong, I've gotta be honest. Alright, I think we're gonna lead Nemesis. Now, we're not 100% certain, we don't know Ginger Dead Man's peak. I think we gotta watch all the Ginger Dead Man movies yeah. right now to get, like, an actual understanding of his true capabilities. Oh, let me ask ChatGPT. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> Who would win in a fight? Who is it? Nemesis. Nemesis? Or the Ginger your dead man. I hope that somehow this question just breaks chat GPT. All right, here we go. In a fight between Nemesis from Resident Evil and the Ginger Dead Man, Nemesis would almost certainly come out on top. Nemesis is a bioengineered killing machine with superhuman strength, speed, and endurance. He's armed with powerful weapons and has the ability to regenerate. The Ginger Dead Man, on the other hand, is a cookie brought to life through <laughs> dark magic. Less formidable in terms of combat capabilities. Wait, no, hang on, wait. But, but, come on. On, dot 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 it's the ginger dead man okay all right come on man <laughs> well the ginger dead man does have the element of dark magic and unpredictability on his side if we're talking about a scenario where anything goes then sure there's a quote chance for the ginger dead man maybe he could find a clever way to exploit nemesis single-minded focus on destroying targets but it's a long shot but he can't say it's completely impossible for the ginger dead man to win. Hey, the chat GPT can imagine five ways that, that the ginger dead man might defeat Nemesis. How has this become the whole episode? <laughs> Way number one, cookie trap. The ginger dead man could attempt to lure Nemesis into a giant oven or bakery with the premise, promise of delicious cookies. Once inside, he could activate the oven and attempt to bake Nemesis into submission. Trap number two, sugar overload. The ginger dead man might try to overload Nemesis with an excessive amount of sugar and sweets, hoping to incapacitate it with a sugar rest. Or perhaps even candy and juice diabetes. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, number three, cookie minions. The gingerbread man could get access to magical bakery and might summon an army of tiny gingerbread cookie minions to swarm and distract Nemesis. Number four, sprinkles of doom. <laughs> it could have access to a jar of deadly sprinkles. That's it. <laughs> And one of way number five, the Dodo Punch. 
Ginger Dead Man could attempt a flying tackle made of gingerbread dough and aiming to temporarily incapacitate Nemesis by covering him in dough. That would be a lot of dough. All right, so I asked ChatGPT what the odds no. were as a percentage, <laughs> right? No. And at first it was like 95 to 5 Nemesis. But I said, can you crunch the numbers again? Remember, the Ginger Dead Man is very derisive. <laughs> I said, given that the Ginger Dead Man is derisive, I'll adjust the odds to give him a bit more of a fighting chance. In that case, let's say Nemesis has an 80 5% chance of winning while ginger dead man has 15 so what you need to do is get a wheel up with 85% nemesis and 15% ginger dead man will spin the wheel and I think that's the only way we can fairly determine who's gonna win here I'm not doing that no. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just gonna say nemesis and move on. No, that's not fair. <laughs> I feel like we made quite the case for the ginger dead man. I feel like the question of who's more likely to win, 85% still means nemesis is more likely to win. So I've got it here. I think this is the right number. I'm not 100% sure. But I just want to oh, see. <laughs> I just want to see. You'll see there's three ginger dead men. And I, we're just going to see. Okay, for listeners who are not watching, Mark created his own wheel. No shot. Stop. Okay, thank God. <laughs> it got close to ginger dead man, but ultimately Nemesis seems to be the winner. Best two out of three. Yeah, best, best two, two out of three. three, out of five. three. Don't we know how percentages work? We've already oh, solved ah! this. Ah! Oh, oh! Oh, Ginger Dead Man takes second round. No! no! By a sliver, it just passed Ginger Dead Man. Three out of five. Come on, baby! Oh, 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 come on, it's cheating. <laughs> All right, fine. We need to find one of these websites that has a wheel of chance where you can make it look a way that doesn't represent the likelihoods. So you can have ridiculous outcomes that don't make any sense. That would ruin all of our future distractible- 100%, 100%. It would basically ruin everything about this entire premise. All right, subreddit, if you can make a wheel spinner that, is, that you can cheat on. I'm just gonna spin the wheel. We're gonna continue this monstrosity. I'll probably respin if we get duplicates just because of the time we're in. All right, Chucky. I hate Chucky. Something very particular about Chucky as as the doll and everything like creeps me out. Versus Pyramid Head. I don't know much about Pyramid Head. The only thing I remember about Pyramid Head is from the Silent Hill movie. The not very well. I mean, I don't know if there already is, but it wasn't very good. But where he literally rips the skin off of that. Uh, that girl it was just a truly horrific thing. It's like burned into my brain. It's very, very unpleasant. I don't recall Chucky ever doing anything like that. He punishes victims in painful and violent manners. Chucky's just basically a serial killer in a doll's body. That That's 100% accurate, I think. He's like the ginger dead man, except he's in a child's doll instead of a delicious gingerbread cookie. Basically, Chucky could almost beat Nemesis is what we're saying. Chucky could absolutely take Nemesis because he's derisive. God, this is not about Nemesis. Well, yeah, Chucky is almost as derisive. As a surrogate for the ginger dead man, he's he is almost as derisive. Stop with the derisives. No. Okay. Veto. No, but this, so this is like size and strength versus like cunning, right? Because Pyramid Head's big and scary and strong. But Chucky is derisive, callous, demeaning, also uh, uh, a little bit insane and torturous. I feel like Chucky could set could, could like set some traps and create a scenario where he could get to drop on Big Dumb Pyramid Head. You, you guys know we don't have like, we're not in the corner of derisive. We're just trying to figure out who's more likely to win in a fight. Sure, right? sure. I'm not taking sides. I'm just saying what I think. And I think Chucky is a lot like Ginger Dead Man. And I think they both get underestimated pretty dramatically, considering the wide range of derisive skills that they have. I don't know that I would lean on Chucky win. I asked ChatGPT how a hypothetical fight between the Ginger Dead Man and Pyramid Head would go. This isn't Ginger Dead Man, this is Chucky! Basically the same thing. It's not. So you don't want to hear how this fight's gonna go? Go, just read it, whatever, man. No, no, you don't want to hear it. I don't want to no, waste no, please, your time. please, the audience I'm sure does, maybe. No, 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 it's fine. Oh. It's fine! Oh, I'm not back up, bro! I'm not taking over your, your, your episode or anything. Who wins? Chucky or Pyramid Head? Well, I don't know about Chucky, but Ginger Dead Man actually beat Pyramid Head. 
Ginger Dead Man summons waves of boiling molasses that envelop Pyramid Head, trapping him in a sticky prison. With a final maniacal laugh, the Ginger Dead Man conjures a bolt of dark energy, didn't know that was possible, that strikes Pyramid Head, defeating him once and for all. Wait, you guys want to talk about, you gotta hear something interesting? Uh, so Ginger Dead Man, famously voiced by Gary Busey, right? Wow. Did you guys see the, the video? There was like a viral TikTok going around of of what looked like Gary Busey as a guest at a podcast. And he was like, you gotta talk about buttered sausage. You gotta talk about buttered sausage. I do not know. Yeah. Oh, well, it was a deep fake, apparently, which I initially did not know, but is sort of obvious after the fact. Is that related to Chucky versus Pyramid Head? Anyway, I just think Gary Busey is, is a funny guy. And his portrayal of the Trincher Dead Man just gives me a lot of faith in the little guy in these fights yeah. you know i pick chucky and gary Busey. well i think the ginger dead man could beat pyramid head but i don't know if pyramid head would be beaten by chucky so who are you leaning toward i go chucky great next round no more discussion <laughs> we're just moving on oh please let one of us pick i have a guess yes! <laughs> <laughs> All right, I already know what I'm gonna- I already know. Don't even spin yet. So there's this horror movie. I think it's just called Tire, right? But there's this tire. <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> there is! There's this movie about this tire. Why did I add this? I don't know if it's possessed or something, but it's, it makes people- It's called rubber. Rubber, rubber, right? And so it makes people, I think, just blow up. I, I, I don't know if that's what it is, but for some reason in my head- A homicidal car tire, discovering that it has destructive psionic power, sets its sights on a desert town once a mysterious woman becomes its obsession. Whew. I'm, I, does it make people blow up? I haven't actually seen the movie, but it's been described to me. Uh, Wait, why are you exasperated? This is a real villain in a real horror movie. Uh, just who's the rubber take on or tire, whatever the fuck their name is. Let's find out. Let's see what the competition is. Yeah, you're being a little, a little negative about Please this. Please don't be Bob or Mark's choice. Nemesis! <laughs> Nemesis! Hey! A respin, right? It's a respin. <laughs> no, 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 no. The tire in horror makes people's heads explode. You're correct, Mark. Ooh, interesting. Oh, ooh. Well, you see a clip? No, the, but that's a good ability. Nemesis is big and strong, but his head can explode. Exactly. And because, like, you know, it may not just be the head, it may be, like, centered on things in the head, and a lot of weak points in Resident Evil are eyes, which are a head feature, and I think that still would fall within the purview. And if it could make every eye explode, and especially the head, like, let's not, let's not gloss over the fact that wherever it thinks a head is, this tire is gonna be like, a kaboom. I think, what's his name? Just Rubber? It's just a black tire. The movie's called Rubber. We'll call him Mr. Rubber. Oh wait, his name's Robert! <laughs> Rubber is the story of Robert, an inanimate tire that has been abandoned in the desert and suddenly and inexplicably comes to life. As Robert roams the bleak landscape, he discovers that he possesses a terrifying telepathic power that gives him the ability to destroy anything he wishes. Anything he wishes. It's not even something in a head or a human, wow. right? It gives him the ability to destroy anything with psionic explosion power. How could you even stop that? Apparently they don't. They think they do, but then they don't, and then there's an army of them. Rubber Robert does whatever the hell Rubber Robert wants. Robert Rubber? Rubber Robert? Robert? I like Robert Rubber. Robert Rubber? Yeah, that sounds good. All right, so I'm assuming you guys are going with the tire. Robert wins! Yes. Yeah! <laughs> I don't know what you're so disappointed. We're fully engaging with your topic, Wade. We thought of creatures that you didn't even think. Leatherface? I don't know who, who that is. Texas Chainsaw Massacre guy. Oh, okay. I call him Chainsaw Guy. That's like a normal dude, though, but... Samara from the ring. Because for Samara to have power, you have to see the movie, right? Yeah, that's the whole thing, right? She can crawl out of the TV and watch the movie. But... How would Leatherface encounter Samara? If Let's assume it's fair that, that Samara is there, therefore a movie has been seen. Yeah, is this just like a fight in a neutral like coliseum where it's like, get each other? Well, honestly, I would assume that Leatherface would be in his house when he watches the tape. Yeah. So for Samara to come out of the TV, she would be in Leatherface's 
domain. What does she do other than creepily crawl out of the TV and up onto the ceiling? Touches you and you die or something. Pretty much, yeah. And your jaw is like all... And there's water like spewing out. She'd be a great villain to kill Jason. Oh yeah, that's actually a good point if that was the matchup. But it's not Wade, so stay on topic. She was a very powerful psychic child with a terrible sadistic... Oh, was that the whole thing? Now I'm looking back, I'm like, of course. Of course it was a psychic child and there were experiments being run with the chair floating upside down like that. Ah, now it makes sense. Sure, sure. Sure, sure. She is the vengeful ghost of a young mass murder, and her character is based on Sadako Yamamura, who shares a similar backstory. Huh. What happens if you destroy the TV as she's crawling out of it? Would it be like a portal that gets cut off and she just like right at the torso? I don't know. What happens if you get like halfway through the movie and you cut up the TV? I have no idea. Like what if Leatherface gets bored and just... Yeah, what if he just cuts her in half as she's trying to crawl out of the TV? Seems like an easy solution, just don't have TVs. Are there TVs in Leatherface's house? Uh, let me ask ChatGPT. <laughs> Does Leatherface watch TV? Is highly unlikely that he would gauge, engage in such activities, although there is no specific canonic information regarding whether or not Leatherface watches TV. Well, are there TVs in the house? Because neither one would win if he never sees the tape, right? It would just, they would never encounter each other. Yeah, but I think we have to be like, they have to encounter each other somehow. It, it has to happen. Does Samara have any, like, abilities? Other, she could kill you by touching you, and she can uh, cross the astral planes or something, however she teleports. Well, she has the psychic abilities when she's alive, too. Yeah, well, that's the thing, right? This is that the character in the ring is like the ghost of of Samara, she implants her psychic self onto video tapes, basically, or whatever. I don't know. She's not very scary, but I feel like Leatherface is just a reclusive, like, antisocial dude, and Samara would probably win. Yeah, given that Samara's, like, mostly a spirit, I don't think a chainsaw is gonna do much, and yeah, he is just a dude, so I'm pretty sure Samara would win. Alright, well, there you have it. Next! But would the ginger dead man be able to take Samara on? Well, maybe we'll find out. Chucky again? Come on! Alright, let's just say Chucky is ginger dead man. I, I think those are interchangeable. Okay, yeah, Chucky slash ginger dead man yeah, got uh -huh. it uh nemesis <laughs> dracula <laughs> oh interesting interesting dracula is very susceptible to derisive comments he's a sensitive man well he's not a man but it, vampires are very sensitive creatures they do have a lot of like pride typically yeah ego can you kill dracula by being derisive or is ginger as effective against vampires as garlic is if you bake garlic into the recipe i guess six ways to stop a vampire ginger's not on the list <laughs> <laughs> how similar is ginger to garlic they are different plant families families technically uh well and of course they look different okay no i don't know if ginger is close enough related to garlic to really count for that <sighs> I will say, in the favor of Ginger Dead Man, he is a cookie. That's true. Cookies traditionally get decoration using royal icing or something like that. Vampires uh, canonically are vulnerable to holy symbols. That's true. That's true. And so the gingerbread man could become a consecrated object. That's true. That's true. Which could repel and or harm vampires, giving him quite the advantage in a fight against vampires. Also, vampires are traditionally vulnerable to fire. Clearly, Gingerbread Man, Ginger Dead Man, has already survived fire. He's chill with fire. Chucky's not chill with fire, so he's not even... I feel like you guys are doing a lot of in favor. How would Dracula win? How do you? How would Dracula kill Ginger Dead Man? No blood to suck! Yeah, but vampires can eat. It just doesn't give them sustenance, right? They have, they have like, stomachs and whatnot or something. I, I guess he doesn't have to eat him to kill him. You could just chew him up and spit him out and make you turn Ginger Dead Man into a little pile of said wet cookie dust. Would that kill him, though, or would that just incapacitate the Ginger Dead Man until he reconstitutes? Would he just split into more ginger dead men. Oh, it'd be like gray goo. Yeah. He turns into little 
little individual crumbs that can all act together. That's the thing about the ginger dead man is you can't kill him. You can only make more of him. Dude, if you take a bite of the ginger dead man and swallow that, then those crumbs turn into little individual and they kill you from the inside out. Oh, no. I'm assuming you guys are saying ginger dead man kills Dracula. How could Dracula win? That's what I want to know. What is he? What's Dracula got? What's he going to turn into a bat? And I've heard rumors that the ginger dead man's smile lights up a room just as bright is the sun and that would blast Dracula out of this universe. I don't know if I've heard that. We've all heard that! <laughs> like you... Oh, that's Chad GPD if he's heard that! I'm just spinning the goddamn wheel. I'm asking how bright the ginger dead man's smile is. Slender man? Uh-huh, yeah, whatever. Versus... Michael Myers! Eh, we could spin again. We've already done him. He's a loser. We'll only get winners back in. How about that? We'll only have winners come back. No! <laughs> The ginger dead man! <laughs> Chuck, he lost! <laughs> but the ginger dead man won! Yeah, he won every fight! Jigsaw versus Slenderman. Oh man, I don't know if I can... <laughs> what does Jigsaw do? I know he's very nefarious, but he just kind of sits there, doesn't he? Jigs Jigsaw is an old man with cancer. That's what Jigsaw is. That's an old man <laughs> with cancer. Other, there's other normal people out here. <laughs> we could have had ginger dead man against Slenderman. That would have been great. If that's what you want, Jigsaw would lose, so yeah, go for it. Why not? Oh, no! well, what are you saying that about? Is Slender Man gonna like go unconscious and wake up with a jaw trap on his face? He doesn't even have a mouth. How how exactly does does the jigsaw killer like get people? Kidnaps them. Yeah. Usually like hides and sedates them and puts them in a room when they wake up, they're chained to the floor or whatever. I feel like there's just no way in hell Slender Man's gonna get snuck up on and knocked and sedated and kidnapped somehow. Unless Jigsaw's stealthy enough to get all of his pages. Ooh. Distract him with traps. Get the page. Yeah, we're not even thinking about how they actually are defeated. This is interesting because Slender Man sets up a game basically like Jigsaw does. This is actually a more even matchup than we think. Slender Man has this game that you have to play where you have to get the pages and then he, you win and he doesn't kill you. But Jigsaw, you win or you die. Well, the same thing. But you know what I mean? So if okay. Both of them are in an arena where, let's say, Jigsaw has to get all the pages, and then Slenderman has to get through all the traps. It's a matter of whether or not they're both in their peak, they both put each other in their ideal situations, and which one can coerce the ginger dead man onto their side. Jigsaw, I would say, is more intelligent. His traps are a lot more intricate than just some paper taped to a tree. But Slender obviously has all of his supernatural Slender abilities. So, I don't know, this is your guys' thing. You debate it. Jigsaw's pretty crazy. He is probably derisive. <laughs> oh, well, uh, definitely derisive, but it really pales in comparison to the well-baked nature of the ginger dead man. And Slender, I don't think, talks, so you're not going to get any callousness or derisiveness from him. Well, can't the Slender man, like, literally, like, teleport and stuff, though? Like, what? <laughs> yeah, he can do that. Yeah. He so, like, that. he's in a room, and then Jigsaw pops up, and he's like, hey, you, find, you have to solve the puzzle, and Slender man is just like... And disappears. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. Put puzzle solved. Well, I guess we have to assess. Is Jigsaw getting the pages before he dies or is Slenderman catching him? He's an old man who's, like Mark said, is battling cancer. So him moving around in the woods with a flashlight trying to grab pages, he may not be in his physical peak. Unless we're taking him at his peak, but at his peak, he wasn't yet a serial killer. I feel like I know who I want to win and I know who does win. Yeah, okay. Me too. We'll say it at the same time. All right. Say who you want to win first. Three, two, what? The, the ginger, ginger dead, dead man. man. Say who wins. Three, two. Slut, sl oh, what? Slender Man. All right. One more that I hope. <laughs> Jesus Christ. You know, <laughs> fuck this. I'm just going to reveal the names. All right. Who haven't we picked on here? We haven't picked. We've had a lot of not Almo picked. Almo from Fear. Pennywise, Xenomorph, Pinhead. Yeah, why'd you rig up this wheel so bad? It was a good wheel. We got barely two of these. Yeah, because every single fucking round, you guys are just like, Chucky, do you mean Ginger Dead Man? We got Chucky like four times. Yeah, we did get Chucky four times. I, I can't. It's a wheel. What do you want me to do? I don't know. Fix it. Yeah, fix it. All right. What's a fun combo we haven't done? Just let let it ride. Let it ride. I, we'll do lightning round. We'll do lightning round and we'll be like, it'll be like winner stays in, you know? Oh, yeah. King of the Hill. Yeah, King, King of the, of the hill. hill. King of the Hill. Speed round. All right, well, we know who's not going to be in the hill. Uh, okay, Michael Myers is king of the hill for one round. Let's go, baby. 
Uh, FNAF animatronics. They, they, if it's all of them, they gang up on him, he's got no ch no shot, no shot. It's They inject him with sedatives and then beat him to death with a pipe. Yeah, exactly, and stuff him into a suit. It's no shot. Goodbye, Michael Myers. So are we keeping the previous one? Is it FNAF versus? Yeah, yeah, FNAF animatronics are there. It's Freddy, Bonnie, Chica, and Foxy up there. Versus themselves! Oh, that's a tough one. They have to fight their inner demons. No, they have to fight the toy versions of themselves. And I think, like, the O- whatever it is, the OG Five Nights at Freddy's one animatronics are there at the top of the hill at the end of it, so yeah. Alright, so now we're down to the FNAF one animatronics. Yep. Versus... The tire! Robert, rubber! Would- well, the thing is, there's four of them. It would just make them all explode. I would believe he would be able to get them all. I don't think he can machine gun that power, right? It's gotta be a- there's gotta be a little cooldown on it. I- there's no limitations placed in the lore on the power. He just doesn't- he doesn't want to kill a lot of people at once, but like- You know, that's fair. He could destroy- he could destroy all of Freddy Fazbear's pizza in one action. That's- that's fair. I think, yeah, you're totally right. It would blow up all of them, so I think it's the tire at the top of the hill. Robert Rubber takes the king of the hill! Is anyone gonna beat the tire? Is there a point? We spit in more? Ginger dead man might, uh, knock him down a couple notches. Does Xenomorph beat a tire? If he blows him up near enough, the acid blood gets on him and the tire melts. That's kind of a draw. Kind of a draw. Well, but there's more than one Xenomorph, right? That, that, is that all of the Xenomorph? This just says one. Is that the plural of Xenomorph? Xenomorphies? It does say just one, but you know, Ginger Dead Men turned into an army of Ginger Dead Men, so... Oh, that was just theoretical. That's fine. I mean, so are you saying the tire wins this, we think, Mark? Uh, I don't know. I think it would melt. I really do think if it got close enough and, like, it was stocked, like, even if it got one of its explodies off, it would melt. The... Yeah, well, the tire doesn't have supernatural perception or anything, right? And it's not its not like an acrobat, it just rolls around. So the Xenomorph would have to do its, like, crawling around the vents type thing and get get it by surprise, but it's possible. I think that it would result in, it would be ambushed, and then as the tire is being slashed to bits, it would, like, blow up the Xenomorph and then still melt. I think both are dead. No king of the hill! They're both dead! It's empty. Anyone's, anyone can take it. Pennywise. Pennywise. Pennywise! Pennywise materializes on top of the hill. Yep, Pennywise is just... Just there, it's fun. Pennywise versus Nemesis. Ooh. Nemesis. What exactly is Pennywise's set of skills? He's like a space alien demon thing. But he gets all of his power based on fear, and I don't think the Nemesis is afraid of nobody. I don't think Nemesis would, Nemesis would be afraid of shit. Yeah, and I, I don't know if an alien is gonna have anything to do with a rocket launcher to the face. I don't think he's gonna like that. I think Nemesis is king of the hill. Yeah. Yep. Well, I think we all know who Nemesis needs to look out for if, we, if Bob's choice comes up. <laughs> Please, no. <laughs> I, I agree, it's gonna be a real tight matchup. Chucky, a.k.a. No. Ginger Dead Man. Bob's choice could be Ginger Dead Man. This is Chucky. Okay, well, Nemesis absolutely stomps Chucky. Nemesis yeah, would I mean, destroy that's not, Chucky. That's not a very good fight. Chucky's not even derisive. Yeah, that's not, that's not close. I hate you guys. What? 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 <laughs> what? 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 <laughs> Not even. Why is derisive the thing? Ghostface versus Nemesis. I, I don't think Ghostface has a chance. Isn't Ghostface just like a teenage kid in a mask, or like a mid early twenties? It's like thirty different people in a mask because every movie it's a different person because the previous one's defeated. In the in the first movie, isn't it? Isn't it the lore actually that it's both of those guys that at different points in the movie the shoes are different and it's both of the guys, but they're just guys. Yeah, no shot. No shot, no shot, no shot. No shot. Nemesis is tough. That doesn't seem very fair. <gasps> Nemesis versus Samara. Samara, interesting. I don't know, even if Samara, like, drowned Nemesis, I don't know if that would kill it. I don't know if that would kill it. Yeah, I just see Samara starts to try to crawl out of the TV and Nemesis just rocket launchers it to hell. Well, okay, but if it's like, Samara is kind of like a ghost spirit and Nemesis is technically alive. We did conclude that gun, that chainsaws would not actually kill Samara, so we could conclude that a rocket launcher might not actually kill Samara. Yeah, but it would blow up any TVs nearby. Yeah, I mean, destroying the physical tape would be what you'd have to do to kill Samara, right? Because it's- I don't know if that was enough or not. How did they stop her? They didn't. They just made a copy. You make a copy of the tape. Oh, and they passed it along. Mm -hmm. 
I don't think Samara's winning because I don't think Samara could kill Nemesis. I don't think Samara could get Nemesis off the hill is really where we're where I'm at. Because every time Nemesis kind of gets blown up or smitheroon, I think Nemesis just grows kind of bigger. So how do you feel, Bob? Oh, you could you also can defeat Samara by watching the video backwards. Is that true? That's what this says. That you traditionally what you do is you make a copy or you just show it to someone else. But also Samara specifically, the ring character, can be defeated by watching the video in reverse. Interesting. Is Nemesis watching TV? <laughs> is he gonna be like rewind? I don't know. I don't know. I defer to Mark. I th it's gotta be Nemesis. I think it's gotta be Nemesis All right. here. Nemesis stays on the hill. Jigsaw. So Nemesis was killed by a normal person, and Jigsaw's pretty intricate with his technology and traps. Obviously, if they're just like in a room together, Jigsaw's fucked. This old man with cancer is getting rocket launchered and then shoved inside of Nemesis. How much prep time does Jigsaw <laughs> get for this fight? Because like traps are kind of a big deal in the Resident Evil universe in general. That's a lot of what moves things forward and makes things happen in, in that world. Well, if we're assuming they're all in their primes or whatever, then he would have a chance to have his battleground set up, I guess. Yeah, if, if it's ideal scenario for Jigsaw, this takes place in his own, like, warehouse of wonders, right? Where everything's all set up. Is he smart enough and savvy enough to, to take a Nemesis out, or does Nemesis just rocket launch everything into Abyss? Well, Nemesis could also just blow through the walls and stuff, too. He wouldn't necessarily have to stop to solve a puzzle. Probably still Nemesis, right? Probably, yeah. Mm, probably. <laughs> The very long King of the Hill, Pinhead. So I'm not as familiar with Pinhead's all of his abilities. He's the guy from Hellraiser. Oh, right. So you have to have like a, it's a weird like cube thing that like summons him or something. I don't remember what he wants. Um, okay. Pinhead is invulnerable, ageless, immortal, capable of teleportation, magically disguising himself as other people and transforming humans into Cenobites. That sounds pretty tough. Yeah, how did they stop him in the movies? I don't think they did. What what is a what is a Cenobite? Cenobites are extra dimensional beings who exist in an extra dimensional realm. Well, that's some nonsense. If you look on the Wikipedia for Hellraiser, is that Nemesis in the background? Is this a picture of Nemesis back there? It sure looks like him. Is Nemesis a secretly a Cenobite? I just linked it. Just tell me to look at the guy in the back right and then look up a picture of Nemesis. Okay, I mean Oh. Huh. <laughs> I know, right? He's already converted him, so did Pinhead win? I don't know. Yeah, I mean, if they're on the same team and Pinhead is the king of the Cenobites, Pinhead, Pinhead wins? Yeah, probably Pinhead wins. Okay, Pinhead. Wow, we finally have a... Who's going to beat him? Oh, we'll find out. Ginger dead man. Ginger no. dead man. Uh, Jason. I don't know if Jason wins if Nemesis didn't. He's basically invulnerable, so I'm not sure how he loses, but I'm also not sure how he wins. I feel like Hellraiser would probably just be, like, impressed, but I don't know if Jason's killing i don't even know what pinhead can do and i'm probably just, still just kind of like pinhead has like the like demonic powers and like like tortures people and his mode of killing is pulling them apart with hooked chains it doesn't sound like that would kill jason but also there's just no way jason is getting the jump on this guy yeah probably not i feel like you have to beat pinhead with intelligence and jason's just kind of like a brute malevolent force slender versus pinhead Interesting. So Slender is supernatural, so as is Pinhead. I feel like Slender is not nearly as destructive or violent, but it gets the job done against humans. It's, it's just like anytime you read the Wikipedia about Pinhead, it's always just going to be like nearly unlimited power and highly versatile and not bound by rules governing other Cenobites, Te telekinetically control vast areas, transmute matter, create and control fire and animate objects. I, I mean, I don't even like Pinhead. Head and I think he wins. All right. Pyramid head versus the pin head. A lot of head actions. A lot of head. A lot of fixed skateboards. I don't even know what pyramid head can do. He has a blade. Does, he just trudges around and kills people with his big blade, right? Yeah, it's probably going to be pin head. I don't even know if this is much of a debate. This is the speed round. Leatherface, just a dude. Yeah, he's just a dude. Yeah, no shot. No shot. Bracula versus Pinhead. I mean, Pinhead absolutely has the capacity to just will a wooden spike through Dracula's heart without even moving a muscle, right? Like, I don't... Or probably even just, like, move the earth to go, well, you're in the sun now. <laughs> yeah. I mean, yeah. maybe. It's like one of those, like, Zelda Breath of the Wild puzzles where it's like, the, he's just holding the earth and he's like, oh, sun. 
Oh, oh, gotcha. He's very pale and wears all black. He might also not like the sun. Nah, he's nah a, I think he's cool. gotta be Pinhead. Psychic powers. I think. I think Pin. We. I think we created a monster. I think Pinhead was a sleeper on there. I guess so. And then there were three. Okay. What is? Who is Alma Wade from Fear? Like Samara, basically. Like telekinesis, goal, ghostly ghost. But has yeah, has more like direct. I'm gonna slam this person's body around. Actually, might be a good matchup. So comparable to Pinhead in terms of like magical, supernatural, telekinetic type ability type stuff. Maybe I don't know how she ends up getting stopped if she even does. Is she a character? Is she like? Do you fight her directly, or does she just like exist benevolently in the world? I don't know. I've never played the games. Uh, I don't remember how it finished, but I it, I think it is a situation where like she's either like I don't know like tr her physical body is trapped away somewhere or she's dead. I have no idea. But ChatGPT says both are incredibly powerful beings so a fight between the two would be a clash of titans in the horror genre the odds that chat gpt is saying it's around 50 50 almost psychic abilities could potentially wow. give her the upper hand however pinhead's own mastery over pain and reality could counterbalance that making it a tough call uh this clash would be where strategy and timing rather than brute force determine the victor so flip a coin, I guess. Well, I will say, uh, Pinhead, it, maybe it wasn't too hard, but uh, the, it's, the, it's worn down. Pinhead's been fighting an awful lot. That's true. This is King of the Hill, and that is part of the strategy. Pinhead has fought a lot, and not all weaklings either. Okay, we can give it to Alma just to change it up a little bit. It's 50-50. It's fun to have a new, new one. One final spin. Uh... <laughs> Freddy Krueger, eh? That's another interesting matchup because if Freddy can get like into her head while she's sleeping, well, but she can change. She can travel dimensions and stuff. Is like part of her abilities. Like this is. They both kind of operate. I mean, the game Fear. Oh wait, the, uh, a, something called the Almaverse is a sleep-like world created by Alma, which are actually her own mind manipulations of destructive nightmare on the opponent. She works in the world of sleepy nightmares. Ooh. That's a vulnerability to Freddy, right? That's like how Freddy works. Yeah, if, if he can't even be strong in his nightmares, which is the only place he really exists. Well, that's the question. Who would have the advantage in manipulating the nightmare? Because that's what they both do. I mean, Alma actually has psychic powers and is the ability to, like, change reality. Alma also has something called the Wall of Death. What? <laughs> Excuse me? A large 50-foot-plus tall smoke fog wall with dozens of faces on it, getting close to the wall of death will you will start to hear some deep heavy screaming and entering the wall of death kills you regardless of anything that seems kind of unfair uh yeah that doesn't seem good it's gotta be like once per long rest or something though right i it has something like that i mean jesus well long rest she's taking a nap anyway so it's in the dream are we saying alma wins i, I think actually i i'm like I, the yeah. wall of death versus i've got blade fingers yeah <laughs> <laughs> that's fair i'm gonna tickle you Ooh. ben did not laugh uh oh yeah i wonder what the last spin's gonna land on and i wonder what i'll pick <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's my choice. Would you look at that? No, yes, no, yes, no. Okay, fine. The wheel doesn't like it. I just want to see if I agree with your choice. Yes, no, you do. No, no. We all know that the mythical being who is here to get rid of Alma and ultimately become the king of the hill is the ginger dead man. God damn it. The ginger dead man, does he even sleep? You know, definitely not. He's got dark powers. He's got dark magical powers, actually. Can't she just wall of death him? Uh, he's not technically alive. He's more like a possessed thing. So I really don't think killing him is what you need to do. I don't think that's going to get rid of him. It's the soul. The soul of the the Gary Busey character is is inhabiting, but he's dead. There's no way she kills Pinhead and everyone else, and then loses to a cookie. I mean, one of his main abilities is that he's pliable. Ooh, yeah. So that's no a good point. amount that's of a good point. telekinetic manipulation, no amount of big heavy objects hitting him, crushing him, is he is pliable. That's not what pliable means. That is what pliable means. And and we cannot deny Alma is a child and. The 
that Ginger Dead Man is very derisive, and children are oh, extremely children are incredibly susceptible. incredibly vulnerable to derisive comments. Yeah, it was absolutely. Isn't she not a child? That's just the she's like a forty-seven-year-old lady or something, but she projects a child. It's you know, but you know what? You know what? Her one of her main weaknesses is her children. Mm. Her children. Point Man, which is apparently a person's name, and Paxton Fettel, her second son. I think Ginger Dead Man could be incredibly, cuttingly derisive towards her vulnerable children. That would absolutely devastate Alma. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay, so the way that ChatGPT is crunching the numbers right now, it works out probably that it would be about an 85 to 15 percent uh, battle between Alma and the Ginger Dead Man. I just so happen to have a wheel here uh, with the odds listed up Not right here. I just want to say that ChatGPT has given me five different ways that the Ginger Dead Man could absolutely defeat Alma Wade. Uh, way number one, cookie mind games. Way number two, confectionery magic. Way number three, candy assault. Way number four, baking ritual. Uh -huh. Way number five, psychic jokes. Psychic jokes. No one would ever think of psychic jokes. I Alma's powers are psychic in nature. She would be very vulnerable to psychic jokes. Right, right. Well, uh, I'm just going to spin the wheel, um, and we'll see what happens. It's it's going to be a tough battle. Come on, Ginger Dead Man. Not a chance. Oh, no! No! Oh, thank God. No! God! Three out of five, three out of five, three, three out of five, five, three out of five, five, three out of five, three out of five. It was right there, it was right there! Oh my god. Oh, oh, son of a bitch. Well, that wasn't three, that wasn't three. Hold on, here we go. Three in a row, three in a row. This Stupid is probabilities! No, 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 no! Not even a ginger dead in sight. Four out of seven? What? <laughs> Come on, come on, this was- this all lined up for this to be the perfect finish. Ah, 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 yes! Ah, 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 yes! 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 Cut the rest of that out! Ginger Dead Man yes! wins! Yes! We we'll cut it all out! No! No! We have a winner! Ginger Dead Man is the champion. Mm -hmm. It's his hill now. It is. He's the king of it, and all of us losers need to get the hell off of it. Or God help us, he will deride us. Yeah, we don't want to be derided. The derision is coming! Yeah. Thank you all so much for watching. Today's winner is Bob, because Bob found us the ginger dead man. Hey, wait a minute. <laughs> Congrats, Bob. Mark, you die on this hill because you went along with ginger dead man. Uh, uh, <laughs> Your tire didn't even make it to the final. Robert Rubber never stood a chance. Hey, wait, I was having so much fun this whole time, I didn't realize I could lose. <laughs> That's right, you managed. Let us know somewhere, Reddit, wherever, what you think about the ginger dead man being the most powerful horror villain monster whatever uh, mark do you have a loser speech uh yeah so sometimes you know given the right circumstances given the right opportunities the underdog sometimes does have the upper hand and just because i didn't li uh, didn't win this one doesn't mean that 15 out of 85 times i wouldn't win bob I think we really got to the the core of what you wanted us to talk about. I think we dug deeper than you expected and also went more broad than you thought we could. I think your disappointment stems from a disappointment in yourself because you know that you goofed by leaving the ginger dead man out of the list to begin with. I think the viewers and the listeners are going to be quite satisfied with the fact that Mark and I navigated us to the correct result despite your shortcomings as a host. So I, I, I deserve this win and I uh, appreciate it. And you're welcome for saving the episode, Wade. Thank you. It was going to flounder without you guys. If you haven't already, uh, check out us, I guess. Mark Markiplier, Bob Myskerm. I'm Wade, Minion 777, Lord Minion 777. Merch. Mm -mm. <laughs> mm -mm. Now we're back to no on that. That's still no. Stay tuned for uh, the next one where Bob will host, and I'm sure it will have nothing to do with Ginger, Dead, or Man. Until then, I'm cast out.